These walls are filled with history. The most exciting stock car race I have ever seen in my life. We're gonna have a terrific crash here. Too damn fat to be climbing fences. <laughs> <laughs> I got beat in my own game, I guess. He was with me tonight. I don't know how I did it. of racing has ever won 200 races. It's historic NASCAR Cup Series Coke Zero Sugar 400 from Daytona. For some of the storylines before we fire the engines, let's go to pit road. We'll start with Parker. Well, Rick, Eric Jones comes in this regular season finale, 50 points out of the playoffs. He's going to need a win to get in, and he has a lot of confidence, not because he's won a points race here and a non-points race in the clash, but the way he won those races. Both times, the car was majorly damaged. He told me, all I need is four moving wheels, and I know I can win one of these races at Super Speedway, Marty. Dave. William Byron makes the playoffs tonight, controlling his own destiny if he gains six points on Matt Benedetto and one point on Jimmy Johnson, but controlling your own destiny at Daytona, 40 cars, 200 miles an hour, inches apart. Well, that's kind of crazy, but William Byron's gonna try to do it, Marty. Well, Dave, if you think there's one driver who would have the edge when it comes to feeling the pressure tonight, you would think it would be seven-time champ Jimmy Johnson, but he told me moments ago, I'm actually pretty nervous. I asked him what the game plan is tonight. He said, my mentality is that I'm coming in behind. I need to be aggressive all night long. Expect Jimmy Johnson to keep it up front the entire evening, Rick. Well, now for the most famous words in motorsports from NBC's four-time Emmy Award-nominated athletic competition series, the hosts of American Ninja Warrior. Here's Akbar and Matt. Hey, everyone. I'm Matt Eisman. And I'm Akbar Bajabia Milo. And we're the hosts of American Ninja Warrior. Don't miss an all-new season of American Ninja Warrior on NBC, Monday, September 7th at 8 p.m. We're so excited to be here today to kick off the final race of the NASCAR regular season under the lights of Daytona with the Coke Zero Sugar 400. And we want to wish all of the drivers the best of luck going in to the NASCAR playoffs. Now let's do it. Drivers, start your engines. All right, Craig, when you're ready. Bring it. Such a welcome sound. And I'm not talking about the engines. I'm talking about the roar of the crowd in the background. Over 20,000 are going to witness this here tonight with us.
It's crazy. There really is no memory of the race, the crash. It was just like somebody hit the delete button on one chapter of my life, and that chapter being when the green flag dropped until I walked out of the hospital. Talk to us when you can. I always loved stock car racing. Race door handle to door handle and bounce off each other a little bit. It's just what I like. And the Boilermaker, Ryan Newman. Ryan Newman, Roger Penske wow. win the Daytona 500. Way to go. I was fortunate in so many ways to win that race and then really felt the fortune after the race. <laughs> it kind of defines the history of our sport. You look at where we started racing on sand, having the vision of building this two and a half mile racetrack that now is the center of a lot of things in racing. And it's just amazing. Ryan Newman, a very scary incident, still trapped inside the race car upside down. I was so lucky in so many ways, and it will be a, a little bit different, but I don't know that it's just because it's Daytona because the crash happened there. It's not like I'm going back to visit to mourn. I'm going back to be appreciative of what I've done and what I do and continue to search for success. Every race is special, and every race is a different kind of special, and Daytona is just special in its own right in so many ways. What an amazing story it would be if Ryan Newman could win his way into the playoffs tonight. It's gonna to take a win for Ryan to make the playoffs. Let's take a look at tonight's starting grid brought to you by Coca-Cola. We'll hear from the drivers. Kevin Harvick, Bakersfield, California. Martin Truex Jr., Mayetta, New Jersey. Joey Logano, Middletown, Connecticut. Brad Keselowski, Rochester Hills, Michigan. Eric Almirola, Tampa, Florida. William Byron, Charlotte, North Carolina. Jimmy Johnson, El Cajon, California. Alex Bowman, Tucson, Arizona. Brian Blaney, Hartford, Ohio. Denny Hamlin, Chesterfield, Virginia. Kyle Busch, Las Vegas, Nevada. Austin Dillon, Welcome, North Carolina. Kirk Busch, Las Vegas, Nevada. Clint Boyer, Emporia, Kansas. Matt DiBenedetto, Grass Valley, California. Cole Custer, Ladera Ranch, California. Chris Busher, Prosper, Texas. Tyler Reddick, Corning, California. Matt Kenseth, Cambridge, Wisconsin. Eric Jones, Byron, Michigan. Bubba Wallace, Mobile, Alabama. Ryan Newman, South Bend, Indiana the rest of the field show up there on the left side of the screen. We want to chat with a guy who definitely has a great shot at winning at this racetrack. He's had great success at Super Speedways, and that is the driver starting 31st, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Let's dial him up on the radio, Jr. Hey, Ricky, this is Dale Jr. Can you hear us? Yeah, Dale, I got you. Hey, bud, it's... Uh... It's a race right now where you're going to have to have a win to move on to the playoffs, so we kind of want to know what your plan is tonight. Well, you said it. I mean, we got to win, so it would be awesome to get this Kroger Camaro in victory lane. Uh, the boys have brought some really fast race cars to these speedways, so I feel really good about it uh, and our and our, uh, and our ability to, to be able to do that. Uh, but it's a long race. Uh, we got two stages. Make sure the car is where we want it and, uh, and make sure the fenders are on it there to to make a run for the end. I made a huge mistake in that 500. Going below the double yellow line there that cost us a shot at the 500 and then backed it up with a good run at Talladega. So we'll be, uh, I'm sure, back and forth. Obviously, we start 31st here. Got a long ways to go. Are you working alone tonight or you got some buddies out there? Uh, you always have some buddies. Uh, you know, you seem to, to work with those same guys. Uh, just about every Speedway race, you find yourself amongst the same group of people and. Uh, you know the manufacturers, you know, we're all going to stick together and, and run well with each other. But uh, sometimes you end up out there on an island by yourself as far as manufacturers go. And uh, and I have some other ones that I can draft with. So 
Uh, looking forward to uh, those options when they come. All right, Ricky, have a great race. Thanks for talking to, to us tonight. Not a problem, Dale. Thank you. And you see right here, Ricky's carrying it on board, presented to you by Sonic. Uh, it's a great roof cam right there. He's got a side panel on that car as well. We got four cameras tonight. Another one here is Ryan Newman on the roof of this Coca-Cola cam. Okay, look at this Chris Buescher shot. First third bank cam. It's going to be a fun shot all night. And then Coca-Cola again. Good shot on Denny Hamlin's car. Bounding up through the field. All right, Steve, Ricky mentioned that it's a long race. Give us a particulars in our race breakdown. Well, it's the World Center of Racing, two and a half mile high banks of Daytona International Speedway. We saw them on the road course a couple weeks ago, back on the oval tonight, 31 degrees in the corner. That trial, which can be the trickiest part of this racetrack, 18 degrees, not a lot of grip. We've seen big accidents there. Speeds over 200 miles per hour, only inches apart. 160 laps, 50 laps for stage one, 50 for stage two, the final stage 60 laps. Fuel window, 35 to 37. I've heard they could even go 40, but not far enough to make any of the stages. And Steve, right now they're checking their pit road speed. Yeah, we've seen this all year, remember, since the pandemic. No practice for these guys. The first lap they'll see will be in the race, so something they used to check would be their speed on pit road. You see Ricky Stenhouse right here looking at those green dots across his digital dash. That's how they read pit road speed, graduating lights, just making sure their calculations match up. You mentioned green dots. I think that's a great transition to bring in Rutledge Wood because I'm guessing that when he goes to the Kentucky Derby next weekend, his suit will have green dots on it. Let's bring in Rutledge Wood. Hey, Rut, uh, are you going to keep us socially, I guess, up to date tonight? You know I will, Rick, and that's a pretty good guess on my suit, buddy. You know me too well. We want to see what you, the fans, are doing tonight. It's Saturday night. We're going racing. Check out a couple of tweets we got. First up, we got Ashley True Love, the NASCAR vintage queen. She is watching from her she shed. She is pulling for the 48. Nobody burned down your she shed, Cheryl. You're just fine. We also got Eileen Rygert. She is a huge Matt DiBenedetto fan, part of the Guido Nation. She is watching tonight, hoping for Maddie D to pull off that win. How cool would that be? We know there's a ton of fans there in Daytona tonight. Wherever you are, send us a picture. Use that hashtag. Hey, Rut, we're going to try to get you in the race. Boys, it is going to be exciting tonight. That is for sure. We're looking forward to it, Rut. Thanks for keeping us up to date. Leading the field as the official pace car for the race tonight is the 2020 Toyota Camry TRD. And again, a reminder, this is the last race of the regular season. So the fight for the playoffs ends right here. And you look at the playoff standings, everyone in yellow, they're locked in. 16 spots available to be in the playoffs. Only three now are up for grabs. Yeah, Boyer just needs to gain a few points in that first stage to guarantee a spot, but it is completely open behind him. Maddie D, Byron Johnson, and remember, win and you're in. So even though their names may not be on that screen, if they're outside the top 20 and they're in victory lane, they're in the playoffs, Rick. A couple drivers that had to go to the rear, Austin Dillon as well as Clint Boyer. Uh, unofficial changes for those cars put them to the back of the field. Again, points given out at the end of stage one and stage two. That can help someone on their playoff hopes. Getting ready to kick off the end of the regular season from Daytona. Joe Logano to get Kevin Harvick out to the lead. That outside line starting to organize though. Logano just trying to get up there to block it, but can't. A little bit too late there. Big run. Keselowski, Truex down the back straight away and going into the lead. Now, now Joe Logano in that 22 car. Now he is to the rear bumper. Kevin Harvick going to push that bottom line. It's going to move Kevin Harvick with forward momentum off of turn four. Truex to the bottom of the block. Manufacturers will work together, but when an opportunity presents itself, these drivers are going to take it. Things happen in a split second. It can change just that quickly, and those are the decisions that have to be made as well. Truex had to go up, try to block Harvick there, who had a run off the nose of Joey Logano. Truex able to maintain the lead, but I think again, Keselowski is going to get Harvick a big push down the back straightaway. 
Now Kevin Harvick has a decision to make. Do they stay with the two car or does he start blocking? Does he want to run down to the bottom and block Truex? Now he's driving with that mirror. Listen to it a spotter. Deciding what lane to go to. Now Truex is there, so Harvick too late on the block. And yeah, that outside line's pushed two guys to the front. I think I'd stick with that outside line for a little bit. Look how organized and tight they are in the outside line. That's where the momentum's going to be. Keselowski, a great pusher here early on in this race in the first few laps. Now, every driver talked about one, two. Maintain the lead. Get the lead and maintain it because it's so hard once you get back in the pack to work your way through. So what you're seeing is these drivers getting the lead and doing everything they can to make sure they keep it. Rick, I mentioned no practice. That's where you dial in your heights. Well, look at the 21 and the 17, both dragging their right side track bar mounts. Those sparks showering the cars behind them. Not a big concern. It obviously shows up better at night, but it is crazy to see, Marty. It's a concern for Matt DiBenedetto. He just told Greg Irwin, his crew chief, we're hitting the racetrack way too hard. We have to get that fixed because we won't be competitive if we're like this. All right, there you have it. The crew chief said not a concern. Matty D said, you're crazy. This is on the ground too hard. So you want to be as close as possible. Remember, you see the cars lined up. When we talk about going faster, the idea is to have the car as low as possible. You see it's not just the 21, the 24 right there, William Byron showering sparks as well. Drivers, what's that feel like when you can feel something dragging on the racetrack? Yeah, it's, it's just, it's kind of violent, really. You see, it doesn't do it on the straights. It's only in the corners where the car is loaded, the car travels the most, and in the bumps, it hits those, and it just, it really is violent. It hits really hard. As it clearances itself, then obviously it doesn't hit as hard, but it's very concerning. And it's going to wear that part away, right, Steve? I mean, you're, you're talking about mechanical metal parts that are going to wear away as the race goes on. Well, that track bar mount is a thick piece of at least quarter-inch steel. I don't believe it's going to wear that away. These cars are going to have to be raised up on the pit stops. Great Pro push right there from Diddy Hamlin on the back of that 88 car. That outside line's really been the dominant line. Last night in the Xfinity race, the bottom was the place to be, but right now the outside line continues to push people into the lead. William Byron now taking over the lead of the race from Harvick. William Byron right there at the bottom of the cut line, and with him being the leader, those points are always going to change. If you're leading the race, we're going to assume that you're going to finish the race up there and you will be in. But every position on the racetrack is a point. And again, points are given out at the end of stage one and stage two for anyone that finishes in the top ten. So look at this shot right here from the top of Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s car. We are not normally accustomed to seeing him ride around. So right now, guys, probably just trying to avoid the wreck. He's not going to point himself into these playoffs. He's only going to get the playoffs by winning. So I would think right now his strategy is just stay away from the pack, wait till the end of the race, and then go attack. Marty. But he told us earlier this week, Jeff, when we had a chat with him that you were on, that, hey, I don't want to do that. I don't. I consider this first part and starting 31st kind of as a practice run for what I'll have to do later in the night. So I don't think Stenhouse planned to do this at all, to ride back in 31st. You're right. This is not what we see Ricky Stenhouse, known as one of the most aggressive drivers in the field, normally do at a super speedway race. The one advantage that Ricky has is we have a competition yellow at lap 20, Rick, because of that lack of practice. So we mentioned all the dragging. The crew chiefs will be able to adjust their race cars, and someone like Ricky Stenhouse won't have to worry about it, although we may not get the lap 20 as we see the 27 coasting to a stop here. Unfortunate for the 27, crew chief Todd Parrott on top of the pit box for the 27, making his 700th start as a crew chief, 31 career wins, some Daytona 500, some Brickyards, a championship with Dale Jarrett, a veteran of the sport. J.J. Yaley behind the wheel, 43-year-old from Phoenix, Arizona, issue for him. This caught my attention right here. You see Ryan Priest left hand out the window, 200 miles an hour, a couple feet to all the cars, one hand on the steering wheel. Guys, I didn't know if he had a problem or was just trying to go to the back of the pack. Seems like he just wanted out of that pack. Yeah, he just, see, the, the, the racing up front is been ridiculous. We're coming to a competition yellow. It's the first stage. You'd think these guys would be taking care of their cars, but Man, they're putting ourselves at a lot of risk. Fun to see. I don't know how long it could go on before there's a mistake and some carnage. We see Matt Benedetto in the 21, that fluorescent yellow, number 21, now in the middle, kind of stuck in no man's land. Yeah, the Logano line. ahead of him. He jumped to the middle and trying to make a forward advance. See how that works? And Hamlin, now he's in the middle. Oh. Now you got a really good line of cars formed up in this middle I line. I think Hamlin wanted to go to the middle there, but now he's forced into the center, getting some help. Three wide now at Daytona. There goes Eric Jones in the 20. 
three wide for many, many rows. Not a lot of comfort in the middle, not a lot of air on your car. What does Brad Keselowski do? Does he block the middle? Does he block the bottom? He's trying to block them both right now. <laughs> trying not to let either lane really get on his corner panel. Truex was trying to put him in the middle, trying to drive underneath him. Early in this race, it's always interesting to see if the middle lane's gonna work. Drivers are learning what their cars can and cannot do. You see that right in the middle. Denny Hamlin, 196 miles per hour, mere inches away from the cars on his left and right. You're watching the Coke Zero Sugar 400. Grab an ice cold Coke Zero Sugar and buckle up. You're watching the Coke Zero Sugar 400 on NBC. Austin knows to buckle up. He was involved in one of the most vicious accidents we've seen here. Aerial coverage tonight brought to you by Geico. Looking down on Austin and the rest of the pack here at Daytona. Out front, that 24 of William Byron's looked very strong, Dave. And so far, Rick, they've just been evaluating what that top line looks like as far as it's working. They had a chance to get by the four on the bottom, that 88 of Bowman and the 24 of Byron, but they decided to stay up there thanks to veteran spotter Tab Boyd. He said that top is working, and now it looks like Kevin Harvick has an issue. Yeah, Dave, pulling to the bottom of the track. You see that debris on the front of the car, number one. Harvick saying this way too hot. He was up front, and he said, I've got to bail out of this pack. We're not going to make it even seven laps to the comp. Caution, as hot as this car is right now. And Steve, you see that debris right on the front of that car? Kevin Harvick had no choice, had to drop to the back to cool it down. But I'm not sure he was out front before. I'm not sure if even dropping to the back, if he doesn't get that debris off, is going to cool the car down. Well, that's it, Marty. I don't think going to the back is going to help with more air in the grill. The idea is right here. He's going to pull up behind the six of Ryan Newman. There's a great look out the rear bumper of the six. You see below the word Mustang, 
those different pieces and particles of paper or plastic that's stopping the air going into the radiator. He's so getting a We'll take a look at it this time. He's getting right up on him. He's got to get up a little bit tighter behind one of these cars. Here it is. See if he can get up there. there See goes. how it changes the pressure on the nose and allows that debris to come off. He's got to get it all off, though. Not quite all of it going. Some of it came up, but we need to get a little closer. There oh, you go. Oh, there it goes. Let's see what happens. Got one trying to get inside. All, inside. Oh, all right. All right, Harvick, it's all clean. Back to the front. <laughs> go back and take the lead. <laughs> it's all off, Kevin. You're clean. Oh, that is the power of television right there because the crew chiefs and everybody for the team is watching that broadcast. They're seeing what just happened. They saw the debris come off, and now they said, okay, you're good to go. And Junior's spotting for him. Said, go to the six car. He's got a bumper cam. <laughs> Denny Hamlin, he's been in the middle, he's been in the outside, been on the bottom, been trying to just make something work, Parker. Well, Jeff, and how about Eric Jones up in fourth place? He's that white and blue car fourth in line right there. You know, basically told he's not going to be returning to this 20 car next season. Came into this race 50 points outside the playoffs, knows he has to win. Told me he's just going to go to the front and try to stay there all day. Really going to plan right now for the 20 car. Hi, Jim. Tyler Reddick in that eight car. You know, he has to win this race if he wants to make the playoffs. And that is an aggressive driver right there. He is going to give 100%, make things happen. Well, and drivers, we've got a couple rookies right there. You mentioned Tyler Reddick, well, in front of him, two cars, that 41 of Cole Custer. Here's two rookies in the Cup Series that have been very impressive in 2020. A lot of youth up in the front, isn't it? What does that tell you? <laughs> yeah, William Byron's up there. You just mentioned William Byron currently leading the race. Well, he has a little bit of the same issue that Kevin Harvick does. You know, the disadvantage of being the leader is you're the guy cleaning the racetrack of all of that trash and debris. And if you look at the lower grill on that 24, I see some pieces of paper and plastic. We haven't heard anything on the radio about temperatures. Only a couple laps away from the competition yellow, so they should be able to make it there no problem. But this is something we have to keep an eye on all night. Yeah, the lead car is always going to scoop that up as that debris is laying out there on the racetrack tends to always happen at Daytona and Talladega. If you're leading, though, you are getting more air than anyone else. Is it enough? Probably not. I mean, they take these cars off to be running max temp. So any additional debris is absolutely going to run that car hot. Well, it's an adjustment as a crew chief, Dale, I have, right? I want to run as much grill tape as possible. That makes the car faster. It handles better with more downforce. It's faster because of less drag. The negative to tape is just that, water temperature. You have to cool these engines. But to your point, Dale, I'm not going to give you 25 degrees, 30 degrees. I might give you three, four, five degrees of room, but that's going to be it. So the whole field's went to the high side here. And the reason why everybody's sort of playing along is because if you pull out a line, you will go to the back of this group quickly. And if you pull out, the guy behind you can say, yeah, I might help you, or no, I'm just going to take your spot. And these guys are all pretty selfish, so they're probably just going to take the spot from you unless it's a teammate and you all have some plans. But the nine car back there, Chase Elliott trying to make a move. Everybody said, no, don't like your move, Chase. We're going to send you to the back. A little bit of a cautious move, too, with a competition caution coming very soon. Just, you know, it's early in the race. Play it safe. Go to the top. I'm going to stay like this, but right now, that's the 96. He's going to go. Denny's always been one. It's like, like, hey, if you want to you want to try, we'll try. I don't mind going to the back, trying to work my way back to the front. Denny's good to pull out and try to try to break up this high line express. And Junior, this earlier in the race, do you think someone like Denny is just using this to see, does it work? Can we clear a car? He, he just gets bored riding up in the high line. <laughs> he just <laughs> doesn't want to do that. He wants to race. Two cars in front of him. They just pulled to the bottom. So now that line at the bottom has more cars. Suarez decided, yep, not enough, had enough. He went to the top to fill that hole that these two drivers came to the bottom. Let's see how it works out for him. Suarez made the decision. I'm going to go back to the top. Now another driver at the front. He looked at the bottom. Is it going to work? Decided, nope, I'm going to go back to the top. Too much to lose. So right there, that. The caution's out. Yep, competition caution has just come out. Caution, caution. One outsider. That move netted Suarez three positions. I think some of those moves that you saw drivers making was because they knew the competition caution was coming very soon. So make a move, see if you can get two or three spots Absolutely. when that caution falls. And so it'll be 
the team's choice if they want to come to pit road now under this competition caution. But already we have seen some crazy racing up front and a lot of youth running in the top 10 right now. Four of the rookies are up there in the top 10. Pit stops taking place after this competition caution, Dave. Fuel only for the 24 of William Byron. Mission accomplished so far, looking very good on the racetrack. And by the way, when he came to a stop at his pits, you should have seen the trash that fell off the front grill. Back to good cooling, Marty. Fuel only for all of the guys up front, including Alex Bowman right behind his teammate William Byron in a fairly significant adjustment. That car was hitting the track uh, pretty hard early in the run, but Alex Bowman otherwise fairly happy with it. The handling issue was a little bit too tight, Rick. They'll line them back up. We'll have a restart when we come back to Daytona.
NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Together tastes better. Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Perfect for race fans. Applebee's handcrafted burgers. Available dine-in, delivery, and to go. And by Toyota. And there was a lightning strike in the area, and NBC Sports policy uh, states that when that happens in a proximity of the racetrack, uh, we have to have our roof cameras uh, and the handhelds taken down. So that is going to change the perspective a little bit. The fuel went through the Geico restart zone back under green here at Daytona. William Byron and that 88 of Alex Bowman fighting for the lead up front. All right, there you see some team orders. Alex Bowman letting William Byron down in front of him. William was trying to get down there, and Alex was trying to back off and let him happen, but Jones was pushing that 88 car. We got it done, though. They both went up to the top to block that top lane. That eight car, Tyler Reddick, had good momentum going, so they went there to block it. Now, what's difficult for William Byron is he's going to have to try to block both lanes, but he can't leave enough space. It's impossible to leave enough space for him to take his teammate as he's trying to block. So this would be a difficult decision which lane to go to. And so Williams out there out front in great position to gain a lot of stage points. His teammate Jimmy Johnson, who's basically on the same agenda to try to get as many stage points as he can tonight and try to win this race even, is running fourth in line. Now, he's his teammate, but he needs to beat him tonight. He can't allow William Byron to win the stage or finish ahead of him in any stage. He needs to be aggressive. It'll be interesting to see if he gets runs, what he does with it. Junior, one of the things that they've got to be looking at as an organization, though, is Matt Benedetto and where he is running because they're fighting for points with him as well. They could both leapfrog Matt DiBenedetto and both get into the playoffs. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. Jimmy's got to look ahead and say, man, that's one of the cars I need to beat. What do I need to do to get around him? Marty. And Junior, remember who the crew chief for William Byron is. Chad Canals, the seven-time champion with Jimmy Johnson. So Jimmy earlier this week said it was, quote, awkward to race against Chad, trying to make it into the playoffs and having to beat the 24, and awkward for Chad to have to race against the 48, knowing they might be racing for that final spot. And Jimmy told me, listen, it's also awkward because we have to work together, but I've got to beat them. So that's really complex what's going on tonight for the 48 and 24, racing each other maybe for the final spot, but needing to work together at the same time. Yeah, I talked to Jimmy this morning, and I said, man, what's your plan? And he said, I really haven't figured it out. But usually what he likes to do is do the opposite of the other guy. Whatever the plan he's on, he's going to do something different, Dave. You heard the Hendrick people talking about their cars all week. Let's make all four of them super fast, which they are showing so far, being out front with Byron and Bowman. But Chad Canals crew chief said, you know what? It is a little bit unusual racing against Jimmy, but I want to get both of us past the 21 and get us both into the playoffs. You see that bottom lane starting to get really aggressive. Starting to get really aggressive. So Kyle Busch on the back of Eric Jones, trying to give a big push on the front straightaway. Here they go again, trying to get locked up. Look at that run and it's going to create on the bottom. Three Joe Gibbs racing cars were lined up there, nose to tail. Now they're spread out, the 2018 and 11. Behind them, Matt Kenseth in the middle, trying to make a run up to, to the front. Matt Kenseth, he wins this race. He goes to the playoffs. We'll go back and watch. See Kyle Busch in that green car. Eric Jones in the blue car, a 20 car in the front. Kyle runs up trying to push him, to help him. When he does, he doesn't center it up very well, and Eric Jones has a lot of work to do. When you hit bumpers like that, it really propels the guy forward, but you have to be lined up correctly. If not, it can shoot the car in front of you to the left or to the right. Now all three of them, three Joe Gibbs cars pushing each other. They got a lot of momentum down here in the turn three. They're going to push that 20 car out to the lead here. William Byron doesn't go down there to side draft. He kind of just lets it happen. They're still organized down here on the bottom, still going forward. Still passing that outside line. Great job of staying collected, meaning Kyle Busch in that 18 car. He's he's working to try to make sure Kenny that he didn't the outside. I don't know if he meant to do that or not. Sometimes when you're pushing, oh, but Kenseth drove underneath him is what happened. 
Matt Kenseth moved him out of the way, and so Denny Hamlin has to go up to the high line. Now Kenseth goes up there to get in front of the 11. All right, so I was worried about Jimmy Johnson, how he might try to change his strategy and get off of the same strategy that the 24 zone. Jimmy's now in the inside line, just made that move in turn two. That's going to have him right now battling almost side by side with William Byron. That outside line kind of struggling now to create some momentum. Yeah, Denny Hamlin, though, he is behind Matt Kenseth now, trying to push him. And the top lane, the lane moves to the top. Wow. Trying to drag all that to the top. And now will that hang out that bottom line? Logano leading it, Ryan Blaney behind him, and Jimmy Johnson, the seven-time champion, third in that lower line. Parker. Well, guys, we see Matt Kenseth up here at the front. I was talking to him earlier today about Super Speedway Racing since he's come back, and he said, you know, we went to Talladega earlier this year. I only got a couple laps before we had a mechanical issue. He goes, really, the beginning of this race, I'm going to have to learn. Well, I think he's been a pretty quick learner, guys, getting up there in the top five this early on. Yeah, you know, Parker, I think everybody's just pushing really hard. Look who's running third, guys. Christopher Bell, that 95 car. I think we all expected him to be the... Standout rookie this year, but he hasn't been. Some other guys have outshined him. Sitting here in third, and then Michael McDowell in fourth. Really strong runs for those guys early. And the inside line trying to trying to get organized. Will those guys stick with it? And drag and will Joey Logano be able to drag them all back up there? Or will they start to give up on that inside line and try to take opportunities to get into the outside line? They continue to lose these spots. You might see some of these guys bail out. Well, you mentioned Jimmy Johnson, that third car on that inside line. He's watching this outside line drive by him. Watching the guys that he needs to beat in points drive by him as well. 19 laps to go in the stage. He can't afford to not get stage points here because competitors are going to get them. William Byron right now in the top 10. Dave. You mentioned the 34 of Michael McDowell. Of course, his smaller team knows that when they come to either a super speedway or a road course, it's an opportunity for them. And just think what they did here two weeks ago at the Daytona road course, running up in the top 10 all day, eventually finished 10th, and that blue car of McDowell now running up in the top five. Remember, all the Fords have Roush Yates uh, horsepower, so um, uh, Doug Yates making that horsepower for all the Fords. He can run up with the best of them. You saw William Byron. He went to the bottom of the racetrack. Now he's leading that bottom lane. And when he did that, when he made that move, the two guys behind him also made that move. So now you have more cars in the bottom. That will create more energy. Inside line coming to life once again. William Byron in front of him. And they do have a lot of run here. A lot of momentum into the front here. William Byron's going to take the lead. Help from his teammate. Help from that eight car, Tyler Reddick. He had a great run down the back straightaway. Great choice to go to the inside. And now he's sitting at the front of this field. And further back, the 11 car, Denny Hamlin, he made it three wide, hung Matt Kenseth out. Now they're working back into that top lane, but that took a, some energy away from that top lane when Denny Hamlin made that move. Joe Gibbs Racing guys trying to get back together nose to tail, but it's Hendrick that's running the best up front with William Byron leading.
Only 13 laps to go in stage one of the Coke Zero Sugar 400 from Daytona International Speedway. Out front, it's Joey Logano in the high line, and now William Byron leading the low line. He's a couple cars back in fourth. NASCAR Drive is your live race day companion. Follow your favorite drivers with high-definition in-car cameras. Select up to eight different cameras, or you can choose a multi-cam view with four at one time. Visit NASCAR.com slash drive or download the mobile app today. Let's listen in to the spotter for the 22, Joey Logano. Right, TJ Majors. All right. Got five cars clear with you on the bottom. 2018-95 behind Blaney, so got to be aware of that. They're single file with him still. Top five, single file, top six, single file. The 11 is behind the 95 now. And then the 34 got... Scout on Blaney on the 10. On Blaney, but that should box him in behind us. Should be 11 to go at the line, right, Paul? Other other radio? Go, 11 to go. So Tighten much. your mirror, man. They're all over Blaney. That's so much information, Dale Jr. You and I have listened to TJ Majors for years. Just the picture he paints, he's talking about cars five, six, seven cars behind Joey Logano as a driver. You need the information that far back. Yeah, it helps you understand how much momentum is coming in that line behind you. And this spotter is going to give you that information so you can be ready to protect, block, do anything you need to do. TJ is one of the best, if not the best out there. I worked with him for years. Helps me win a lot of races at this racetrack. And Dale, this is crazy, but I, I could close my eyes and don't have to watch it. I mean, for years I sat on the pit box listening to that, Rick, so I can picture the 20. If I listen to TJ, I can see if the 22 still has the lead, if he's getting past, where the runs are coming from. That's how I watched the race was through the headset. So look at the points right here. Playoff bubble. 21 car, that bright yellow car. He now has passed. William Byron in the 24 car right behind. And then two cars behind him is Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car. With 10 to go, these are as I can be. He's certainly making the bottom line exactly what Tyler Reddick draft, that top line. How coordinated does that effort have to be if this bottom line is going to get to the front? Yes, yeah, basically side drafting is getting to the quarter panel of the car beside you, slowing him down, backing him up. You need to do that. You need to have the guys behind you to commit to you, not try to pass you when you're doing things like that. And also, they need to side draft and be aggressive as well. Does the shorter distance help that bottom line? I mean, the bottom line, they're not having to go as far around this racetrack. Yeah, so what you saw right there when you saw that bottom line surge forward, the top lane had to check up. They all kind of ran into each other, and they all started slowing down, and that's when that bottom lane can make some ground. See right here, if they stay spaced apart like that, it's hard to make a run on the bottom. If you start to see them banging at each other, people have to lift, that's when you can get major moves. Parker. And guys, 100 car, we don't see a part of that trio on the bottom is the nine car of Chase Elliott. He had the chance to go down and he refused to go there. He's been struggling with a really loose condition that car and came across here and said, it's not that I didn't want to go with him, I just wanted to have options. And then that door closed, as you can see, and he can't help his Hendrick teammates anymore. They're making moves here. Tyler Reddick in the eight has moved up to second, challenging for the lead now. Yep, you see Blaney side draft him, slow him down. Blaney's getting a great push. He's going to go up there and help Logano. The top three there on the outside line got a lot of momentum here. Really tight together. Well, this is how quick it changed. Jeff, just a, two laps ago, you were talking about that bright yellow 21 all the way back at the top lane. Matty D had the advantage over the two Hendrick cars. They have now gone to the bottom, and now they have the advantage on the 21. Four laps remaining in stage one. Again, the top 10 will get stage points. The outside line's kind of lost its momentum. That, or the inside line has lost its momentum. They're getting organized now, trying to make another run at it. Yeah, that eight car needs the 48 right to his rear bumper, actually pushing him. Yeah, Jimmy needs to get aggressive with that bump draft, don't you think, Jeff? I do. I think Tyler Reddick needs to get aggressive, aggressive with the brake. Drag that brake a little bit. Pull Jimmy Johnson to you. Counterintuitive to think if you drag the brake, you can go, go faster. But if you can get that 48 right to your rear bumper, you will pick up speed. How hard is too hard as far as bumping into someone? If you're not wrecking, it's, it's <laughs> that's, okay. it. that's the that's limit. That's the limit. That's yeah. it. Oh boy, tiptoe up to that limit. Will the bottom line make another run? Now, 
three laps to go. Jay's going to have to get some help to get to the bumper of that eight car to be able to push him. Man, that outside line is tight. They're tight together, and they're going to create a lot of speed doing that. The 21 back there, Dale, I don't think he has any options, right? Just riding line up top. I don't see any holes to move. De Benedetto outside of the top 10. Coming to two to go. There's a hole right there on the top. I see that. Jimmy Johnson decided not to take it. You know, they were thinking the same thing. I was wondering if Jimmy might jump up in there, give up on this high line, Marty. Junior, you see Matty D kind of struggling back there. And since he's gotten behind John Hunter Nemechek, he said, my car just feels, quote, slow. So, Jeff, I'm wondering if you get behind certain cars, does your car react differently even though you're in a draft at 200 miles an hour? Yes, it does. It's, it's amazing how different it can be between one car and another car, how your car drives and the speed that it has. Now only two to go to the stage ends. Who will make a move in this top lane, and when will they make it? If they make it soon enough, it'll help that bottom lane. If they're smart, they'll wait as long as they can to make that move. I'm looking at Eric Jones in that 20 car. Just looking at him thinking he's the guy, that 95 car. Those guys have a tremendous amount to gain. Logano continuing to look strong, leading over his Penske teammate, Ryan Blaney, just behind him. There it went. Oh. There was a move. Eric Jones, first one to make it. Blaney got a, Logano's got a block. Eric Jones trying to take it away. Logano goes down and blocks. Logano. Here comes the 18, though, also. Look what's going to happen with that bottom lane. That's going to give them a lot of forward momentum right here. Big runs coming from behind. Reddick, big run. Here comes the 48. Jimmy Johnson, how aggressive will he be? Byron also moving. The double yellow line is out of bounds. They can't go below that and make a pass. Three wide here with Blaney. That's going to slow that lane down. It's going to be hard to help from behind right now. Reddick went up to side draft, trying to side draft Logano for the win of stage one. Logano on that high line holds him off. He'll win stage one at Daytona. Man, that was like a race to the checkered flag right there. <laughs> guys making some pretty risky moves. It tells you how important it is for these guys to get these points in these stages. More critical now in this race than ever. So Johnson I'll finished fifth and Byron seventh, both gaining points into the stage. Joey Logano gets his fifth stage win of 2020, and the JL Kids crew cheered him on.
Grab an ice cold Coke Zero Sugar and buckle up. You're watching the Coke Zero Sugar 400 only on NBC. Joe Logano heading down pit road after winning stage one. Very happy with that race car. Said it's neutral, thinks the track might free up a little bit. This should be four Goodyear tires and fill the 22 full of Sunoco fuel. Tyler Reddick, the driver who is willing to take a risk and go down and use the low line, will now get four Goodyear tires and full of Sunoco fuel. Just a little bit snug. No balance adjustments, Marty. Dave, Jimmy Johnson with six very needed stage points in the bank. It's going to be four Goodyear tires here and Sunoco fuel for Jimmy Johnson. And you see that adjustment. Johnson saying his car is way too tight off of turn four. A couple of cars, a little strategy play here. Joey Logano, though, wins the race off pit road. Actually, it was Christopher Bell with a two tire stop. Little strategy there, grabbing five spots coming off pit road. NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Sonic. This is how we Sonic. Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Perfect for race fans. And by Coca-Cola. Together tastes better. Well, what better racetrack to go inside the headset than Daytona? You can get access to NASCAR Scanner. Listen in on the pit strategy, spotter communication, monthly subscription starting at just $2.99. Visit NASCAR.com slash scanner to start today. Let's go to our NBC Sports studio here in Charlotte and chat a little bit with DJ and Brad Doherty. Guys, first stage looked like everybody was getting fired up at the end of that one. Oh, gosh, Rick, I've got all these papers and notes in front of me, and nowhere do I see that they were paying 100000 to win that first <laughs> stage. But those drivers were driving like it. I can't imagine what these next two stages are going to be like. This is everything we thought it might be. You know, we've heard all season long about the magic of Tyler Reddick and how great this young rookie is. He brought that number eight car from mid-pack and almost won this stage, showing incredible skill. I've got my eye on Tyler Reddick for this second stage. It's going to be fun. If it's any like thing like this first one, it's going to be something. Well, you see all the Fords on pit road right here. Guys are going to top off with fuel. Brad Kozlowski is going to change tires. A whole bunch of other ones. I see the 19, the 11, some Toyotas. 
This second stage at 46 to go is just outside their fuel window, Rick. I think all these drivers are going to try to get fuel, ride part throttle, Parker, try to make it without another pit stop. Right, Steve, that's exactly, even the two cars said the second we get it full, start saving fuel down pit road. This is maximum fuel save throughout this time under under the uh, caution still. Marty? And Parker, the way it works out, the team, Sassi's Point, would have been about two and a half gallons short from making it to the end of this stage if they had pitted where they pitted earlier. So pitting here, right as they're about to come to the green, Kevin Harvick, in fact, just now taking on his tires as he leaves pit road, saving some fuel during this run. They can probably make it while everybody else, Steve, in the field is going to have to come down pit road at some point. The results from stage one, you see Joey Logano, those 10 points. I think the cars were focusing on Jimmy Johnson, six points. William Byron, four points. The name you don't see on that list, Matt DiBenedetto, the other driver on the bubble, was unable to score points in stage one. The other result of stage one, without those guys winning that stage, that mathematically puts Clint Boyer into the playoffs. No matter what happens the rest of the evening, Clint Boyer, even with a surprise winner, Clint Boyer is in the playoffs. Hamlin was penalized for not staying single file coming on to pit road. Foolish well, Jeff stay single file, but not seeing it right there. He was a little bit to the inside there, but not really trying to make a position out of it or, or didn't seem to be trying to take advantage of it. So with Quentin Bloyer locking in his spot, now two spots remain, only two. And again, if you win, you advance. The field approaching the Geico restart zone. Stage two underway. Christopher Bell in the 95. It's been announced he will go to Joe Gibbs Racing next year. Levine Family Racing right now, the owner of the 95 number and that team, but they are selling. They have sold that number and the charter, so they will be out of NASCAR. Eric Jones in the 20. Because of Clint Boyer clinching and moving into the playoffs, Eric Jones now has to win if he wants to make it into the playoffs. Jimmy had a pretty decent run there. Could have went to the inside. Stay committed to the back of Eric Jones. Jimmy getting help from Kurt Busch. That inside line, only three cars really right there. Not going to be there very long. South side line is going to stay organized up high. Unless Jimmy wants to take the lead now, he can change things up a little bit. It looks like everybody's going to commit to this top side real early in this stage two. I think a lot of that, Junior, is all of those cars that came on pit road to add fuel their strategy is not to drive back to the front. They know the cars in front of them must pit. So at this point, it's all about just find a place in line, run part throttle, and continue to save gas. You know your track position is coming when the other cars come to pit road. So, Steve, it's no way these guys that didn't pit later can make it, unless they have a lot of caution. Yeah, I mean, with yellows, they can, or they can choose to come pit. Under green, I don't see anyone who pitted at lap 52 being able to stretch it. But I've been proven before wrong before up here. It's just so hard here to save fuel, especially if you're leading the pack. Dave? Watching the aid of Tyler Reddick, who was so aggressive in that first stage, his spotter, Derek Nealon, had this discussion with him when it was over. Almost got more than I could, uh, other than I wanted to bargain for right there. Um, probably should have had you hold the 22 longer off of four there uh, before we drop down and grab the 48, let the 48 get a little tighter, but all good, man. Looking good. Yep. Learning. Like what we talked about. Got to be up to the learn. We're learning. And Tyler told us this week he would learn as well. He really loves working with Derek Nealon as a spotter. Met him a couple of years ago when he was running part-time for Chip Ganassi Racing. The races that he wasn't running, he went up in the spotter stand with Nealon, and they said, I saw his passion. I saw what he was willing to do to get to victory lane, and I wanted to work with that guy. And when they had a chance, they brought him to Richard Childress Racing last year. All right, Steve, so we're riding along board Ricky Stenhouse here with a Sonic camera. Sitting there half throttle. Full throttle off turn two. It's going to give him a little bit of run up here. And remember, we saw Ricky Stenhouse Jr. ride in the back early in the race. Now and he's we're into stage two, and he's he look, knows ooh, at some point big, he's got to get to the front. Way out of the gas there, into the corner. But he's not 
you know, he's not running wide open to the back of Bubba Wallace's car. He's staying part throttle, trying uh, apparently to save as much gas as he can. Well, Jeff asked me the question, can anyone make it? I didn't think they could. Ricky Stenhouse, at your point, Dale, you know, they have this information on the pit box. Maybe he can run part throttle long enough to change the plan. Remember, we still have 41 laps to go in this stage. So you don't have to make a decision now. Marty. And Steve, I don't think Stenhouse feels like they have to do it. They're among that group that pitted at 52. But behind them, John Hunter Nemechek and Matt DiBenedetto, the first of those who pitted at 54. So, Jeff, if your crew chief's telling you you got to save about two and a half gallons for me over a run, 40-plus laps here at Daytona, how do you do it as we ride on board with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and watch that throttle trace? Well, you need to know it, Marty, as soon as you come off pit road and before you go green because if you're going to save that much fuel, you have to do it over an extended period of time. Crew chief can't tell me with 10 to go, hey, I need to save two and a half gallons. It's too late. So you take off and you do what Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is doing right now. You're not trying to gain spots. You're not trying to gain track position. You're trying to save fuel. Stay away. Never go full throttle. Use that draft to pull your car. If you ever wondered what the draft does at Daytona, this is clearly it. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., you see the dots. He's not even half throttle, and he's keeping up with the cars in front of him. That's because there's no air that he has to drive through. There's a bubble in front of him that he can just ride in. And now he's going full throttle to keep a certain distance from those cars in front of him. That's how effective the draft is, is at Daytona. And people want to know, why does, if he can run full throttle, why don't he just pull out and pass him? Well, if he goes to that bottom and runs full throttle, he'll go to the back of this line. All these guys running half throttle will go by him in the draft. It's crazy. You say crazy. Uh, we want to take a look at tonight's Xfinity fastest lap. We've watched the throttle trace for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He's on this list as far as one of the fastest laps. It's because he's had a gap in front of him and has been able to catch up to the cars in front of him. That's why he's put together some big laps. Austin Dillon, a lap of 203 plus miles per hour around this two and a half mile super speedway. Yeah, speeds are unbelievable. He's dropped a little bit to the 47. Sounds like two laps. He needs to find about two laps worth of fuel. It's about a gallon. I think that he should be able to do that. But 39 laps to go, Rick. There's a lot of races before we have to worry about that. A lot of people say Dale Jr.'s the Pied Piper. Well, right now, Eric Jones, the Pied Piper here at Daytona.
Daytona pit stops here in stage two, 16 laps in. Jimmy Johnson and all of these cars that came to pit road this time, fuel only. This will get them to the end of the stage. But remember, they're racing those guys who have kind of been hanging out in the back thinking they can make it to the end of the stage. So we're going to have a lot of strategies going on in stage two here at Daytona. And here come the rest of the cars. The Toyota's coming to pit road right now. Steve, splash of fuel going to get them to the end of the stage? Yeah, just a splash of fuel. We saw those cars top off. They're not even going to come to pit road. Parker. Right, and this is one of the things that Toyotas have to do with less numbers. They react to the Chevy car. They told me this is exactly what they'll do. And this is what you see here of Eric Jones and Christopher Bell coming down pit road, a lap layer in the Chevys. They're trying to keep up with them on track by pitting just after them. So everybody all the time gets frustrated about fuel mileage races, and they think it's the length of the race or the length of this. No, it's the strategy. It, it really doesn't have anything to do with the length of these races. It's how the crews break them up. We saw guys come to pit road and top off. Here comes, look at this group of cars right here. That's how much faster they are after a lap up to speed, easily going by the Toyotas who are just now leaving pit road. The concern is on the left-hand side of your screen, you see the leader, Kyle Busch, Stenhouse, Nemechek, Matty D. We were on board with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Jeff Burton and Dale Jr. showed us he was riding half throttle. We listened in, only a lap or two short. The question is, has he saved enough now, right, Dale Jr.? Because with Ricky Stenhouse running second, not saving much, much fuel up there. Yeah, he's not riding half throttle in second position. He can do that further back in the line. But right there behind Kyle Busch, you can bet he's wide open at least 90% of this racetrack. The closer you get to the front, the more throttle you have to use in the draft. Let's go on board here. And there you see it. Trying to not run full throttle. He's got half half throttle, six percent throttle right there. But you see he's not able to get all the way out of it like he was when he was further back in the draft. Look how high that roof flap comes up on that 18 car. All these guys got these things sciced out to where got time roof right flaps here. We are coming up on the straightaways to knock a little air off that spoiler, Marty. Yeah, Junior, this is very interesting. With all the Chevrolets and the Fords coming to pit road, it's kind of put Kyle Busch, Stenhouse, and everybody who came with one to go in a box because Kyle Busch saying, hey, what are we going to do now? We're just going to have to run this long, run it until we have to, quote, flip the switch, meaning they run out of fuel and go to the auxiliary fuel pickup and then come to pit road. But now, further back, Kevin Harvick, Rodney Childers saying, this is not working. Our plan's not working. We're not saving enough fuel to make it to the end. So we're going to have to figure out something else. So, Steve, it's interesting. It's almost like those Chevys and the Fords that came to pit road kind of put these other guys in a little bit of a box. They absolutely did put them in a box because right now we're on board Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He's running in second. So this is the lead pack. Kyle Busch, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., John Hunter, Matty D. This whole group, you see them, about 20, 25 cars. But then if you look ahead of them, yeah, we're gonna be about four you short, see right there, short, these are all the cars that have come to pit road. All these cars are good on fuel, Rick. Their concern is they are 35 seconds behind the leaders, currently running two or three tenths of a second slower than that big pack. The question is with 31 to go, man, these guys got to get organized. These four are pretty organized. There's a gap with a group behind them. But Jeff, you know, Dale Jr. right now, I'm trying to let you all know we can't let that big pack catch us. And if you're the leaders, I'm trying to convince you to just stay in line and run as fast as possible. Yeah, that, that's, we just heard, Steve, to make this even more complicated, we just heard that the crew chief on Kyle Busch, we just heard him say, we're three or four laps short. Right. So he's leading this pack knowing that he's going to have to pit also. So it's the, the field is completely mixed up, and their gambles are going to have to be made. Think about that 21 car right there. Matty Benedetto, he has a shot right here. If he can make it to the end of this stage and we don't get a caution, he didn't get points in stage one. He could get points in this stage, and the guys he's competing against won't get any. And Dave. Jeff, you burn more fuel out front. And real quick, Adam Stevens just told Kyle Busch, listen, you've got to give up the lead as soon as you can. So far, he has not, Dave. Give up here's the that lead to a driver? <laughs> Dave. And Rick, here's that second pack of Chevrolets trying to catch that other pack. I've been told that four is not quite enough. They need more than four to outrun that big pack. So here's Byron back here, the third car back. He was alone for a while. Finally, he found his Chevrolet friends here. They're working their way up toward that other pack that all pitted on lap 65 under green. So basically, Rick, you have a big split strategy. 
Kyle Busch is leading the race. You're going to see the 96 of Suarez may go by, and this could help Kyle save a little gas. But you have a group of cars out here. Can't quite make it to the end of this stage. You have a group that think they can. A caution will change everything. Ty Dillon, Suarez. Ty Dillon's going to go to the inside here of Suarez. Bubba Wallace, Corey LaJoy, all these guys clearly don't feel like they need to save. They're going to go up here, and that's great for Kyle. He can get behind these guys and start to run a little part throttle, start to gain back some of that fuel mileage that he's looking for. Another car really not looking to save. Denny Hamlin pushing hard on the back of Corey LaJoy down the back straightaway. All that real hard, all that action with all of this turbulence being created, thrown up in the air. That's helping that 21 car who's back in ninth right now. The more cars get in front of him, the more he can save fuel. Talk if he's going to try to make this, Steve, that's going to help him being further back. Yeah, you talk about a lucky break. The 43 of Bubba Wallace currently in the fourth, fifth position as it's move around. He had a fuel pressure issue is what we're hearing on the radio, and he had to pull out of line when everybody was single file, went all the way to the back. The best I can diagnose through the radio conversation, they cycled the engine. It has fixed something with the fuel pressure. Let's listen into the 43. Okay. Still got oil pressure. Fuel pump or something bad. Flip your fuel switch. Flip your fuel switch. See if that helps. Cleared it out. You may pay it or what? That's that. That was radio for when he was having that issue, so they were able to diagnose it or at least temporarily solve it. I don't know if they've diagnosed it. So good break for the 43. You know, he's not in the best position with fuel, and we've documented all that, but he at least is still on the racetrack, still on the lead lap, still can recover, having a nice run. Yeah, I thought he's going to lead to or lose the, the lead draft when that issue happened, and he's done a great job of not only getting back in the draft, but driving to the front of this field, and look at Daniel Suarez. What a great run for this guy, this 96 car. I know they're out there full throttle trying to lead this pack. A lot of guys saving gas, but Daniel's really worked hard to get up toward the front here, made a lot of great moves tonight. And Daniel did pit, you know, on lap 54. Those guys be immediately behind him, they pit it on lap 52. So he does have some extra fuel. All right, we said get organized with this group of Chevrolets right here. Our organized, Rick, they are flying one second faster than the leaders in Daytona.
The annual run for the Roses will take place on the first Saturday in September. Coverage of the Kentucky Derby next Saturday, September 5th, starts at 2.30 p.m. Eastern on NBC. That's following the Xfinity Series race from Darlington. Well, welcome back to Daytona NASCAR Cup Series. Coke Zero Sugar 400 underway. Junior, we just saw you there with uh, Rutledge. We know that you had a pretty good experience at uh, the Kentucky Derby last year. Yeah, it's so much fun. I've never been. It's kind of like the 8500 when it plays in life. You have to see in person at least once. Want to get a few updates? Uh, we'll start with the top two and Dave. Nice to see a couple of names up front. We don't see that way all the time. The 96, that black car, that is Daniel Suarez. Team owned by Marty Gaunton. Marty has put a lot of work into this team since the return to racing. In fact, he's been to the wind tunnel four times, not just for this race, but to improve their entire program. Suarez currently leading. Behind him, the 13 of Ty Dillon. Ty's very comfortable with restrictor plate racing. Obviously learned it uh, kind of in his blood, you might say. And last year had his best career finish here, a fourth in the summer race. We're looking at a Toyota driver update as we see Suarez up front. Was with Joe Gibbs Racing. Lost that job and moved over into the 96. Now running up front here, obviously it's a strategy move. Uh, and you talked about him topping off, Steve. Yeah, so Rick, we have 23 cars that have not pitted under green during this stage. They are all clumped together. You see him right here, this big long line of cars behind Daniel Suarez, Ty Dillon, and Bubba Wallace. It's a mixture between these 23 cars. Some, we're hearing, Feel like they're good on fuel. Some, not so much. We're going to have to see what team can manage the fuel, who can make it. You see them all lined up. Not a lot of cars out of line. Farther behind these guys, basically almost a straightaway behind. You're going to see them right here, a little more than a straightaway in the middle of one and two. All of these cars pitted under green. 100% sure these cars can all make it to the end on fuel. The issue is if the guys in front of them can, they're not going to get those points. You see Jimmy Johnson leading the pack in the 24th position. So right now it's all about staying alive, being efficient, and great communication from the pet box to the driver on where you stand with fuel. Jimmy Johnson gained points in the first stage, six points there by finishing in the fifth position. William Byron also needed points. He finished seventh in that first stage. Jimmy Johnson and his gang, they're running 46 flats. The leader, Daniel Suarez, and that, that pack are running 46-8. So, eight-tenths slower each lap. Jimmy, 19 seconds back. Coming to 18 to go in the stage. Well, you just mentioned it, Dale. That since this 96 has taken the lead, they're, they're slow. This lead pack is very, very slow. We're hearing some conversation out of the Ford camp, the 14, and some other cars, and they're saying, hey, if we run this slow, those Chevys are going to pit and catch us. This isn't going to work. So they're trying to be patient. But as you look back in the middle of this pack, there are a few Fords. You have the 21 of Matty D. As you go back through, you see some other ones. The 6 of Ryan Newman's back there. Even behind him, you have the 14 and some others. The 4, the 17, the 41. We're here, and they want to get out of line and go, Rick. They feel they could be faster than those Chevrolets. You saw the breakdown of counts. Not many Toyotas in the field, a lot of Chevrolets and Fords. The second they get out of line, this big pack catches them. Are they still standing in line, though, probably to assure themselves of making it to the end of the stage, being critical that they do not run out of gas? Maybe expect them with 10 to go. Yeah, but the problem is pull if you out. wait too long, those Chevys are coming. Yeah. And you know as a driver, Dale, if you're catching a guy a second or a a lap when you come you're going to get there with so much momentum you are going to easily drive up what halfway through this pack i assume marty yeah these guys who pitted at lap 54 including matt de benedetto you see him in that bright yellow car down there getting a little antsy if you will they feel like they should be able to go versus the guys up front like kyle bush who pitted at 52. greg Irwin told him a moment ago i'm going to let you go in just a moment give me a little bit more fuel safe because by their calculation, Steve, they have predictive lap software. The Chevys will catch them with one to go. So those Fords don't have time to wait. You're right. Those Chevys are coming fast. Calculations are real-time data, Jeff. You know, the crew chiefs can now see how much drive fuel they're using, how much throttle they're using. Yeah, that's right. A lot of information the crew chiefs to see <laughs> what, what their competition is doing as well as what they're doing themselves. You know, one thing about it, guys, think about it. You know, yes, there are faster cars back in this pack, but as they work themselves 
to the front, that's going to slow that line down some too. It's not like they're going to immediately go faster. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I got this vision in my head. I can't get out with Daniel Suarez. I saw him immediately after not qualifying for the Daytona 500 this year and the dejection on his face and, and how down he was. First year with this team, this, is a, this team does not have the funding from teams that he's accustomed to driving for. And you can just see it in his eyes how much it hurt. Imagine how much better he feels today leading this race. Monterey, Mexico, Daniel Suarez out front. We know how important it is to come in first. That's why first responder calls take priority on the network public safety agencies rely on. NASCAR is brought to you by Verizon. The official app of NASCAR puts race coverage and live in-car cameras right at your fingertips. You can unlock premium content today with a free trial. You search NASCAR in your app store or you can visit nascar.com slash mobile. Daniel Suarez still in front of now Kyle Busch, but things are going to change up here. These guys are getting a little bit low on fuel. Some are going to have to come to pit road, Steve. Yeah, we saw three cars right there and nonstop come to pit road. Bubba Wallace came, the 13 of Ty Dillon, and the 32 of Corey LaJoy. They showed their hand. We can't make it. They came to pit road and got fuel by themselves, which is a little risky as far as lap time, but a lot safer. You're not going to get damage coming to pit road. This mess right here, though, you see it. The 22 of Joey Logano is trying to push the issue. He gets to the outside of the 21. I think they can feel the heat coming of those lined up Chevrolets who have been gaining between one and one and a half seconds. My math has them catching this pack with one or two to go. And you see the two and three wide at the back of the pack. There's going to be a lot going on. And I also don't think that we have are yet to see all the cars that have to pit. We're hearing the 18 of Kyle Busch might be coming as well at some point. Look at Matt DiBenedetto in that bright yellow car. Remember, he needs points. And all that, that outside lane lined up on him, and they all went by him. 
So if he, if he can go this whole way and the guards in front of him can as well, look at all the points he is potentially losing. He was in the inside in the wrong lane. The faster lane went around him and now he's trying to play catch up. Kyle Busch sliding in. Stenhouse cut him some slack right there. This is the, uh, if you don't have enough fuel, stay left. If you have enough <laughs> fuel, go right. <laughs> Barney. I think Matty D's a little frustrated by that. If you'll remember, he was in the front of the pack of all these Fords that pitted in lap 54. Joey Logano jumped out, went first. Matt was making a plan to be the guy who jumped first. But now he's in a position where he might get very little stage points sitting in eighth, and he thought he would be leading this pack. Well, you got to be the guy that makes the choice first. You can't sit there and make a plan while everybody else is already ma you know, making their moves. Matty D is in a position where he can't be apprehensive. He has to come into this race knowing exactly what he needs to do. Be on the offense, taking every run he gets. I will say this move by the Fords has really helped their lap time. They've picked up almost a half a second getting by the 96. Now Joey Logano leading the pack. It's still going to be close on if that other pack will catch them, but now look how organized they are, Rick, single file. Yeah, they what are. about running out of fuel, though? I mean, you've they got are. eight laps to go. <laughs> That's bad. They're organized, but they're running that high line where most of them run more throttle in that line. So I don't know how it affects a lot of these guys who are going to be short. Well, if you're the these guys that topped off, you want to try to get perhaps the 18 of Kyle Busch out of line. Force him to come to pit road. That's one more spot for the 21. Let's listen to the 21 radio. We're all single file. We need all the points we can get. There you have it. We already knew that. Yep, there he goes. He's oh, going to try to get those out points. Of, yeah, he jumps out alive. And who's going to go with him? Is anybody going to go with him? Or can he slide up? Can he go far enough up to Kyle Busch? Kyle Busch is closing that gap. Wow. Clint Boyer now, Matt has nowhere to go. Holes closed in front of him. Oh, this works. Now he's going to fall back. They yeah. needed every point. We heard the team talk about it, and Look now he's going to fall back. Look at that, that aggressive side draft, door to door on that 47 held him in that position. Such a smart move. A lot of guys really don't know about that. You get really, really tight on that car on the outside line. You can almost stall him out and hold him in position till the next corner. And if you can separate, if you can pull the car far enough back to create a gap where he can maybe slide into, that's what he's trying to do right now. There's just no way he's going to make this work by himself. If you want to really stall out, you've got to get, I mean, an inch off that door really, really tight. He's holding position pretty decently right here. I mean, a big move by him, trying to do something, trying to get points. But now, coming up on five laps to go in this stage, he needs help. There he goes. It cost him a spot there. All of that right there, one, one position lost. But let's remember the finish of stage one. There was a lot of energy in those last two or three laps. I know he doesn't want to finish in the ninth position in this stage, but I think the opportunity will come. We're here in the 18 of Kyle Busch may have to pit for fuel. That will change the energy. There it is. We wondered if the 48 and the Chevys would get there. They are to the back of this pack. And look at the pace gaining the field. Look at the run the 48 has. Jimmy Johnson. Again, they know they have enough fuel. That group has worked together to catch the lead pack, and now we'll see how far up they can move. And Kyle Busch has got put into the middle. And remember, Kyle Busch, he did it on lap 52, I believe. He has less laps. If he ran out of fuel right here, Marty, that would be a big he, problem. He's, he has to get down. Adam Stevens said, you have to come this time for Kyle Busch, and he's in the middle. He can't get down. And the same for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. They told him down, we can down, maybe make down. it to three to go. Now Kyle Busch finally gets to the bottom, so they're going to go one lap longer than they wanted to on the 18. And Jimmy Johnson needs to get. There you go. Jimmy Johnson moving forward. There's a lot of energy in the front right Absolutely now. Absolutely have to come this time because this will be three to go. Yeah, and the pit road will close with two laps to go. When the leader takes the, the flag for two laps to go or crosses the start finish line, they have to come before pit road closes, so they have to come this time. Well, I'm sorry, you go ahead. He's waving frantically out the window, <laughs> hoping that these guys see, man, don't run, over, don't run, run me over here. Come off of turn four. I need to get to pit road. Nobody tight behind him. He's going to be able to get there safely. Jimmy Johnson was sideways off turn four right there. Jimmy's going to be really aggressive right here. Looking for points. There he goes. He's going to make it three wide. Who's going to go with him? 
Actually cleared, he was actually able to clear Nemechek. Look at the speed of Jimmy Johnson and look at the aggressiveness. Kurt Busch coming up behind him to give him a big push. Yeah, Kurt's been on his bumper this whole time, really dedicated at 48, giving him these opportunities. Now can that outside line work together? Coming up on two laps to go. Martin Truex Jr. in the 19. Up front of that second line, the high line. So look at the back of that pack, guys. That Where's William Byron? There he is on the bottom lane. Can he get up there and get some points? That 24 car, right now in 11th. Truex got the momentum to get the outside of Blaney now. Side by side for second, continuing to advance that outside line forward. Clint Boyer giving him a good push, 22 to block here. Logano decides to block, Blaney has a little momentum on the low side, can he pull side by side for the lead here at Daytona? Truex is gonna push that 22, he had a shot there to go to the inside. He's gonna stay on his bumper into turn three and four. The end of stage one was very aggressive, I think this is gonna be more aggressive. You just get the, you can get the feel of the intensity picking up. Coming up on one to go. One more lap in stage two. Logano out front. Here comes Johnson trying to look to the inside of 14. There's contact. Clint's blocking him. Clint with a big block right there. That's going to slow that line down. Almost got sideways. Boyer, though, up to second. Now he'll drop back a bit. The 48 of Jimmy Johnson trying to find someone to work with to get up front. Logano blocks again. Joey Logano out front. He won stage one, looking to win stage two. Boyer, Martin Shrek's Jr. fighting behind him for position. Coming through the trial again. Logano does it again. He'll win stage two. Jimmy Johnson is Byron finishes outside the top 10, no stage points for him. Lost a few spots there in that last lap. Last lap, last set of corners, a huge block by Ryan Blaney in the 12. Stopped the momentum of the 24. You mentioned it, Dale Jr. Cut him out of the top 10. William Byron was on the inside of the playoffs and the playoff bubble. So tumultuous here at Daytona. Now William Byron on the outside looking in.
Final stage coming up in the Coke Zero Sugar 400 from Daytona International Speedway. Let's go to Parker. And Joe Locano, as he crossed the line there, came across the screen. That's two, meaning two stage wins for the 22 car here at Daytona. It's going to be four tires. Full Snoko fuel just a little loose when he got out into the lead there for the 22. Dave? Stage one, seven points for William Byron. Stage two, no points. They'll take on their four Goodyear tires here. Phillips, Phillips full of Sunoco fuel and work on the strategy now, Marty, to get to the playoffs. 12 stage points deposited for Jimmy Johnson, and he that is the second most of anybody tonight. You saw that wedge adjustment. Car's a little bit too tight off of turn four. Four fresh Goodyear tires. We'll see if the pit crew can do their job. Also, a little tape on the grill as well, and Johnson will uh, come out fourth. Joey Logano, Holt serve here on pit road, Rick. Yeah, you see the race off pit road. Top three guys holding their position. Kyle Busch tries a two-tire stop there, gaining 19 spots in that pit stop. Tomorrow, the second leg of the FedEx Cup playoffs concludes with final round coverage of the BMW Championship from Olympia Fields in Illinois. Coverage on NBC at 3 p.m. Right now, leaders Dustin Johnson, he is on a roll. Still one. Well, take a look at our broadcasters in their golf attire, DJ and Steve. Uh, that was last week when you guys were calling the Xfinity Series race. Uh, business on top, golf on the bottom here. I had a tea time break. I mean, listen, I don't even have my shirt tucked in. I can go dress shirt off, golf shirt on, and I am course ready, buddy. Yeah, you had your golf shoes on there. Hideki uh, Matsuyama is also uh, co-leader right now at one under. Let's check in with Rutledge Wood. He always has his golf attire on. Oh, Rick, what a bunch of dorks we work with. That's hilarious. Uh, we got some great pictures coming in from our friends at the track. Let's take a look. First up, Callie and her friends are out there at Daytona International Speedway. She said Saturdays are for the girls. Take a look at this picture. So cool they're out there enjoying it with their friends. I love it. Uh, we've also got uh, Chad and his little guy. They're out there pulling for the 48 and Chase. I'm sure their heart rate was up as much as mine was on that last one. And Terry and his wife, Kathy, 
are there pulling for the 43. So much exciting stuff going on. And you realize, Rick, that uh, business up top, golf on bottom is just like, that's like a business casual mullet, I believe. So good for our friends. My derby jacket's here. That promo, Dale and I look so good. I, I might have to change. <laughs> we, we know that you have uh, the wardrobe figured out, Rutledge. Uh, points earned today, very big for Jimmy Johnson. Uh, Marty mentioned 12 points uh, through the first two stages for Jimmy Johnson, also getting points. Uh, you see Logano winning both of them, obviously, with his 20 points. Uh, but William Byron got points in the first stage, didn't get points in that second stage, so didn't even make it into the top 10 of points earned. All right, so the calculator has been on fire up here, and our stat man, Russell, has been double checking my calculations. And basically after all of those stages, William Byron, barring a winner, he needs to outrun the 21 by six spots to beat him in the points. And he has to outrun the 48 by five spots to beat him in the points. Because now we know what they have earned in the stages. So now it's a lot clearer. You know, it's hard to kind of project and guess because the stages, well, the right. stages are over. So now they know. But remember, Rick, that's all assuming we don't have a crazy winner. You know, throw Eric Jones up front in victory lane and all my calculations get thrown out the window. <laughs> I'm impressed by Eric Jones racing hard all night long, getting those stage points when he really only has to just win the race. Only has to win. I like the way you say that. Yeah. He only has to win. It doesn't really matter what race. he does at the stages, but he's been racing toward the front. He does not have a ride for next year either, so he is racing for his future. Pitting too soon, uh, Ross Chastain in the 77, and the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Penalties for those two, the field approaching the Geico restart zone. Logano, Martin Trex Jr. up front. Final stage underway. No more worrying about points. Everyone fighting for position on the racetrack, trying to get into position to win at Daytona. One of the biggest things you can do in your career. Martin Truex Jr. now has Joey Logano all over his back bumper. They're trying to pull away. They've got Clint Boyer running in that third spot. Rick, I was just shocked. I, I knew this, but I didn't believe it as we prepped for this race. Martin Truex Jr. 0 for 61 in speedway races. I mean, that just shocked me. You see this crazy racing. We have 55 laps to go. Everyone will need to come to pit road for fuel, some sooner than others, but no one can make it to the finish. You also predicted 1 for 62, I think is what you made well, the comment. I mean, you threw that out there. Michael Walter told me he went, oh, and I can't remember. <laughs> 400 and some odd That was race. a lot. It yeah. was a lot. Great shot right here from the Coca-Cola cam. Riding with Ryan Newman. You see what he's looking at. You see Matt Kenseth move to the bottom. Now there's nobody in front of Ryan Newman taking that air away from him. So a lot of drag on his car. See that bottom lane taking advantage of it. Ryan's got a little help behind him here. Eric Jones driving up through the field again. There's so many people in this field that if you win this race, they can move on to be in the playoffs. And that is going to create more anxious moments as this race moves on, Marty. And Jeff, remember Ryan Newman, certainly one of those. When I asked him earlier today, are you willing to be aggressive? He said, hey, I'll be as aggressive as I was in February. This time, I'll finish it, though. And I love Ryan's leadership behind the wheel, kind of calming his crew down under this last caution, saying, hey, don't be in a hurry this stage. Let me do the work. You worry about the pit strategy. I'll get us up front right, right now. Ryan Newman doing that, running in 13th and running well. Rick, I don't know what it is about Ryan Newman and his posture in a race car. Some guys are leaning back and they look like they're on a cruise. Ryan Newman looks like he's in a fight. He's up on that wheel like he is ready to just pounce. It looks like it's the last lap for Ryan Newman right yeah. there. Well, it is Ryan Newman. <laughs> Every true. lap is the last lap. He gives 100% all the time. Matt Benedetto made a move. This, this whole line was single file, about 15th position, but Matt Benedetto went three wide. Jimmy Johnson. Trying to stay in the center of the sandwich. Now he's going to get behind Bubba Wallace here. But I see a little desperation in that 21 car now in this third stage. He's got a little help behind him in that two car. If he can get three of this three wide, I think Brad can push that 21 toward the front, Dave. See William Byron now in that 24 car down on the bottom line. He came for a top off of fuel before they went green. They also had a discussion on the math. Listen. Right now, we've got to finish five positions ahead of the 21 in order to transfer. And six ahead of the 48 I2. Hold on, publish. No, you just race like hell. 
It was difficult for them to do, Steve, and they didn't come up with the same numbers as you. Uh, maybe you can get Russell to text uh, Chad. One position, one position. I feel better about Russell's numbers. We'll see. But that's the point, Rick. I mean, think about that. It, it all comes down to one point here or there, and then there's this tiebreaker. They could literally tie in points, and yeah. then it is who outruns who. The tiebreaker comes in. It is very difficult. That's why Dale Jr. said the best thing to do is just go get that win, right? Then you know you're in. When you're in. Kurt Busch leading it at outside line now toward the front with Ty Dillon, Jimmy Johnson behind him, and then Matt DiBenedetto leading the third groove to the outside of those guys. Man, the business is picking up a little bit here in this third stage. And we're not going to miss anything as we'll go NASCAR nonstop. You can watch it all. Martin Trucks Jr. out front now at Daytona. Right at Daytona. Let's see who's on the move. Brought to you by Credit One. Chase Elliott, 23 spots from where he started. That could have been the last lap. As crazy as this has been, Rick. <laughs> yeah, I know it. He could update that lap by <laughs> lap. But Jimmy Johnson been very aggressive. Let's see what he does now. Sitting there in third place. Spotters telling him, "Hey, two rows behind. They're too wide." It's really important information. If the spotter sees that outside lane coming, they'll relay that information. Jimmy has a teammate behind him, so it'll make that decision a little bit harder. But we've seen Jimmy. If he thinks he can make a move forward, he is going to make a move. Decided he's going to be aggressive in his race, and he's done it. Steve, when you come to pit road, you've got to have somebody to come with you. So when do you start thinking about that? Because we know they still have to come to pit road in this stage. Do you start putting a plan together this early? Yeah, absolutely. I started on Monday. 
coming up with a plan of who I was hopefully going to pit with in this final stage. You have to have numbers. Here's the trick. I want to be one of the first cars to come to pit road, but I also got to know how important tires are. Do we plan on taking tires? Probably at least right sides with how much fuel they take. Jeff, you and I have had this fundamental disagreement. I only want to come with maybe, what, five or six cars to get on and off pit road early. You like coming with more. I mean, you and I have disagreed. Yeah, yeah. listen, I, I think it depends on the group you're coming with. I, I think it completely depends who you're coming with. I think if you come with too many cars, it's way too slow. Getting on pit road is just too tough. If oh. you come with <laughs> the yeah. right number of cars, it makes that exchange right. so what's off my track, right number? on track. Give me my right number. If I'm your crew chief, i got to start wheeling and I want, I want four or five cars, but I want good ones. I want right. good drivers that are going to drive in the corner hard. You'll Battle take pit road hard. Four good ones. Five, I'll just, just take ten. Yeah, ten average, that. just in case we can't mess it up. Parker. <laughs> Well, guys, one car that's not a part of this front pack that normally we'd think would be there is on the left side of your screen, the two car of Brad Keselowski, six time Super Speedway winner. Though, those were a while ago. He has not had a good finish of Super Speedway in the last 10 races. Why? Because normally the way he goes about these races, get to the front, throwing blocks, staying up front the whole time. And he said, lately, I just keep getting wrecked. This is by design, something uncharacteristic for this two car to run at the back and maybe have these cars in that big pack wreck and pick up the pieces later. Watch yeah, Jimmy Johnson. He's been, <laughs> he's been watching that outside lane. Now he decided to go with it. Joey Logano pushing him. Got a really good cars in that outside lane. Right now, if there's one guy you want behind you pushing you, it's Joey Logano. Yes. He's been aggressive. There's no rules in the Cup Series for locking bumpers, and Joey will be aggressive and push that car as much as he can with his temperatures, keeping those temperatures cool. Look at this. Martin Truex Jr. jumps to that outside line to block. That allows the 18 to move up. Man, he had him sideways. Jimmy had that 19 sideways out of the trioval. Yeah, Jimmy's not lifting tonight. Oh, Logano underneath Jimmy Johnson. He'll put him three wide on the outside. Now hung out on the outside. Jimmy Johnson will start to fall back. Absolutely. That, there is no third line organized right now for Jimmy. Although Kenseth. Ricky Stenhouse, or that, yeah, Matt Kenseth is going to get up there and try to help him. And all that work Jimmy Johnson's done all night long, he's got to start over. Got to start over, find a way to get back to the front. So frustrating. And now he's outside the playoff picture. Just that quickly. It can happen that fast here at Daytona. One move, one wrong move, one person that hangs you out, and all of a sudden he's two spots behind the playoffs. Now you got to be careful not to push too hard, right? There's still many laps left to go, 40 laps left to go. Don't push too hard. Don't make a mistake here trying to overcome it too quickly. You're going to have to get this back lap by lap. It's not going to happen in a few laps. All right, Rick, you asked about, you know, if you pit, how many cars do you want to come with? You know, I think that debate can rage on. The point I want to make is with 41 laps to go, I think we are only are about two or three laps away from that pit window opening. So at this point, I'm scanning every team. I'm telling my driver to look for hands waving out the window. I'm telling my spotter to not just spot, but watch all the other spotters. If there's a plan, I want to be part of it. Reigning champion Kyle Busch out front as we go NASCAR nonstop.
with only 37 laps to go and now 36 as they cross the stripe. Business is picking up and you saw it in NASCAR nonstop. Guys hanging on. We saw Ross Chastain in the 77 make it four wide and then the 12 of Ryan Blaney. Take a look at this. Almost sideways as he got a big push from Eric Jones behind. Man, what a save. We've seen several saves like that from Ryan Blaney this year. All right, let's look at tonight's Ram Trucks built to serve, guys. The big one, we haven't seen it yet. Yeah, the big one. That question mark isn't if, it's when. Just wondering when that's going to happen. Green flag stops. We're hearing guys are getting close. Here they come. They're going to peel off for green flag stops. And two spots left for this championship or this playoff battle. Who's going to win it? Parker. And Chase Elliott is going to lead those Chevys who are the first of the manufacturers to blink and get on pit road saying this is in their window to make it to the end. You see it's just fuel only and an adjustment in the right rear to tighten them up, Dave. 24 of William Byron. They don't want to take any more time than they have to. So it will be Sunoco fuel only, Marty. A mad dash to the bottom lane for all the Chevy teams, including Jimmy Johnson, who a moment ago was 13 points in the playoffs. After a move, he fell out of the playoffs by eight points as they run fuel only for all of these Chevys. The four teams, though, committed to staying out, running a little bit longer. Kyle Busch right now leading the race. He's going to come down pit road with his Toyota teammates here, Rick. Toyota's on their way to pit road now. Everyone's cycling through green flag pit stops. And just like we've seen throughout the race, the Toyotas follow the Chevys one lap later. You saw Eric Jones fuel only. Same for Martin Truex Jr. He's had a great car tonight, very happy with it. Has led laps. He's got the fuel, Marty. And the same for Kyle Busch as well. Fuel only already gone. All of these crew chiefs airing on the conservative side to be on the early side of the window to come to pit road. They can now build momentum as a pack. We'll see if they can catch those Fords. Eventually, the Fords will have to come to pit road as well. well you mentioned the Fords, the 22 leading the pack of the Fords. They stay on the racetrack. So an interesting theory. They feel they want to run a little further. They're very organized. They're single file. They're running low 46 second laps. And there you see the manufacturers, the blue ovals all lined up. They're the top 13 all Fords that have stayed out. And there's the Toyotas. You see the Toyotas. Chevrolet's pitted a lap before the Toyotas. The Chevrolet's had a bigger pack when they pitted. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Are you going to now justify your lower numbers, Jeff? Is that what you're getting ready to say? If lower suits, numbers if, came to pit road? If it suits my narrative, yes. I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing that suits your narrative is the 18 and the 11 did a great job on and off pit road. Obviously, they're at the front of this group. Question is, will the speed of that Chevrolet line die out before they get there? I yeah. think it's already died out. As you can see the 20 and the 95. Still side by side with William Byron and Kurt Busch. A lot of pushing, a lot of hard pushing on that outside line, but also on the inside, you see it, Denny Hamlin in the 18 locked up. And then these guys are all following after the Fords. And right now it's Kyle Busch running 14th, leading this big pack that has been to pit road already. And now he starts to block. Denny Hamlin says, man, let's get to the top of this line and stop these guys. It's too much work here on the bottom doing it this way. Kyle Busch agrees. And that leaves Eric Jones out to dry as he will fall back on that inside line. Hey, look at this. Look at this lane right here, guys. Nice and organized. Single foul. No side by side. Trying to make the best lap time they can. This pack behind them, they're racing for track position. Trying to be the guy to be leading. These guys up front, they've decided to stay single file. The only thing we're doing is going as fast as we can right now. Now this group is starting to get organized, and they're going to start going quicker. What I don't understand, though, is what the Fords are waiting on. You know, if the yellow comes out right now, they're going to have to all come to pit road. This group won't pit. I'm sure they have a strategy. They're just not out here uh, on a whim. I just don't understand what, what their strategy is, to be quite honest, unless they feel they're going to gain enough time on the racetrack. I mean, they're a little bit faster than the Chevy, so maybe they figure they can run five or six laps and try to get the gap so after a green flag pit stop, they come out in front of them. They were faster while they were a double foul, but now while that big group of cars is single foul, I think that second group is going to start turning faster lap times. So if that's the case, that would push the hand for the 22, 21, and these guys would pit. I think we'll see it in the next couple laps. We can, every time down the backstretch, I keep looking for hands out the window. 
they're 31 seconds ahead of right now that second group that's led by Kyle Busch. Those guys, the last time by ran right this around time, 46. Bring it this time, this right time. This time, bring it. So the Fords are coming. Now you don't want to make a mistake getting to pit road or on pit road. Jeff, I think you called it. That pack got organized. I figured it was Whoa. time to go. Whoa, man, that was close. <laughs> Some decided they weren't going to come. So again, the Fords now. The Blue Oval's making the way onto pit road for their green flag pit stops. Right, and Joe Legato leads them on. You see fuel only, a little tape on the front end there for him to take the speed, Dave. Rookie John Hunter Nemechek, the only way he makes the playoffs is with a, with a win today. Fuel in the Ford, Marty. Fuel only for Matt De Benedetto. Four seconds is what Greg Irwin called for. There they send him out. Also further up here road, Eric Almarola coming down this time as well. Fuel only for him. So now the Fords have played their hand. We'll see where all this cycles out with all the Chevys and Toyotas. There comes the pack. They're flying. They are flying. <laughs> They're going to catch up on them pretty quickly. And go right by. Single file for the Toyotas and the Chevrolets. Logano and De Benedetto are here out in front of this Ford line of cars. And here comes that out that outside line. Kyle Busch turning to get a little bit of a draft off of Chris Buescher. He pulled that line down with him. But now the 22 trying to be at speed when this pack catches them. And it's so tempting to try to pull up in front of this pack, but they're going so fast. You better not do that. What are they going to do? He's going to do it. No, they're going to try to block. You know, that's a, and that's a, such a smart move. I know that Joey wants more than anything to stay in the front of this pack here, but he saw the run they had, and he's like, you know what? I might want to let them go and live the race another lap because that could have been big had he tried to block that car. Now they're just trying to find a hole in that outside lane. Yeah, just looking very hard. Spotters are working on it. There he One goes. There. There's yep. Logano. Right in front of Bubba, and oh. Bubba decides to come out, doesn't want to give him that spot. Wow, who goes with Bubba? Oh, Stenhouse was going to, and then he <laughs> says, I don't know. And look at that up, up front. They're really all not that well organized right now, kind of actually running a little bit lower around the racetrack. That's going to change things a little bit for these guys behind them. We're not going to miss a thing in NASCAR nonstop from Daytona. Grab an ice cold Coke Zero Sugar and buckle up. You're watching the Coke Zero Sugar 400 on NBC.
Joe Gibbs Racing drivers, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin up front here at Daytona. But take a look at the 47. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. aggressive at the super speedways, and he is moving his way up. Side drafting, trying to get that lower line moving. There's the 24 of William Byron right there on the bubble. There's just so many close calls every single corner with these guys. Everybody's taking so many risks right now. This race is delivering. Look at that push right there from the 11 car to the 18. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. thought he was going to side draft that 18 and bring him back, but the 11 said, no, I'm here to push him forward. Well, Ricky in that blue and white car, he is going to be pushing the issue right here. He, this is the furthest we've seen him in the front, and he is going to do his best to stay there, Marty. Well, you just hold your breath every lap, don't you guys? And Ricky Stenhouse Jr., you pointed it out at the start of the race, Jeff, ran at the back intentionally. Brian Patty told me, listen, we don't ride at these races normally today. We're going to. And at lap 130, I'm going to let him go. That was a little while ago. They're eight laps into that Stenhouse up front, racing these final 30 laps and proving, hey, maybe I can be that guy who upsets the playoff picture. Well, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., when we talked to him this week, he said, I'm just going to shut off the haters when they complain about aggressive driving. I'm not even going to worry about it because I'm going out there to win races. I'm not worried about what people think about my driving. He also said that he didn't always like super speedway racing. Early in his career, he wasn't good at it. He didn't like it. He decided he had to be good at it, and he's gone to work, and he has been very good. All right, let's go through the field for the bubble drivers brought to you by Applebee's. Dave. Rick, as it stands this very moment, the numbers are good for William Byron, but it's not going to stay single file like this. And when asked earlier this week what he would do to get other drivers to encourage them to push him to the front, he said block really well. That's probably going to happen soon, Marty. Dave, as it stands right now for Matt DiBenedetto, he is in by two points over Jimmy Johnson if he can hang on. I asked him about the pressure of the race earlier this week, and he said, listen, last year was pressure for me. I didn't know if I would have a job coming in to 2020. I have that now. So to be talking about making the playoffs, to me, that's all good. Parker and right ahead of him in that blue and white car Eric Jones trying to play spoiler he scored the third most stage points tonight but that doesn't matter he came this race 50 points out he knows he mustn't win this race knowing he does not have a job yet for next year he said he's been dialing the phones all week long trying to find a job right now a win would really help that Marty. Jimmy Johnson as aggressive as I have seen him in a super speedway race in years but right now mired back in 20th position trying to find a drafting partner making some daring moves pulling up in front of Ryan Newman right there trying to work his way back to the front Johnson knows what he has to do right now outside looking in Rick can the seven time champ get it done in the final 20 laps Yeah, one of the biggest storylines into 2020 when he mentioned that this would be his final year then COVID hits, the pandemic. They take a break for however many weeks, and Jimmy Johnson not able to get out there and race and be able to fight his final season. Then all of a sudden, he has COVID, misses a race. Now he's fighting just to be in the playoffs after missing that race. Those points were so important, and that's what he pointed to. He I said also when we talked to him, it was Charlotte and Indianapolis. Those two races where he got zero points, that has put him in this position. Well, he's back here in this position, and just a little while ago, we saw him make an extremely bold move right here to fill this hole. Ah, that was so close, Junior. You and I both looked at each other and thought he was wrecked. Yeah, Jimmy's freaking out right here, I believe, in this position, knowing that he needs to move forward. He just isn't getting the help. He's taking the runs that he's getting, but everybody's pretty, tr pretty much trying to organize this outside groove. But back here in the pack, Jimmy wants to move forward. You can see it on the 21. Real out of shape right there. Had to Benedetto. And that's exactly who Jimmy's racing. Really, at the end of the day, that's the battle right there. That's the battle for this last playoff point. You see the points on the side, the playoff bubble. Just a second ago, it was 0-0 between the 21 and 48. They were tied for that 16th spot. It'll have to go to a tiebreaker, but that's how close it is. It's come down to a tie before for the championship. And so you know that every position, right. every point matters. They're coming up on some lap cars here. Caution's out. Caution has come out. And so everyone can collectively catch their breath. Fourth caution of the night. We can catch ours too. Goodness. That was wild. 
wild racing. And there's the reason for the caution, the 51. That's James Davison out of Melbourne, Australia. And a lot of damage to the back of that 51. Yeah, it's pretty obvious that car has at some point gotten into the wall with the right side and the rear bumper, flat tires all around. I actually think he's hit every panel on that car. Man, I, I have never experienced energy and anxiety and excitement like this from a race. Well, and now we're going to get a restart. <laughs> yeah, well, no, a bunch of all up like again. 12 or 13 to go. Well, that's going to be crazy. But putting this race here at this particular point in the season to be the final race of the regular season and, and giving basically anybody the option to, to win and, and, and get into the playoffs, it really, really was a big story. And it's paying off tonight with some amazing, amazing racing, some wild, daring moves. And it's extremely dangerous what these guys are doing, putting themselves on the line just about every corner. So the question I have with 17 laps to go, we we'll continue to talk about the bubble, but the other fascinating story for me is you have Boyer, Custer, Almirola, Kozlowski, kind of all rode in the back for the majority of the race. The question is, Junior, do you dare say it's time to go now, right? You would, in my mind, this is when I expect the big one, right? We're going to clump everybody up inside 15 to go. But if you're wrong, can you really ride around at the back of this field and let this thing end? I don't think so, um, because that that'd be extremely disheartening if you if you waited in the back and nothing happened. Uh, we've done that, and uh, you just have to go, you know, and kind of leave it all up to fate. At this point, it just to me, you know, you could get caution after caution after caution, and literally not enough green flag laps to make the moves you need to make to put yourself up toward the front. So I think you got to go now and just leave it up to fate. That's what we've seen out of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Everybody fighting. They want to make the playoffs. Well, the playoffs are going to begin next Sunday night on NBCSN. The first race of the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs will be at Darlington Raceway. And it's once again throwback weekend. That race coverage from the track Too Tough to Tame is going to begin at 6 p.m. Eastern. Take a look at the playoff schedule. Arlington, Richmond, Bristol, it's incredible. That's a great three races. Think about the tradition. And keep this in mind, guys. You know, we haven't talked about Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin because they're not racing to make the playoffs. But what they are racing for is playoff points. But also, remember, the field is set next week by how you do today. Fastest lap, where you finish, where you are in points. So the playoffs start next week and you want to start as high up in that field as you possibly can you see tires on pit wall i expect the leaders to probably stay out they have that track position but somewhere in the field definitely towards the back those fords i mentioned the four of kevin harvick he doesn't have any track position so if you're going to make those moves that dale jr talked about four fresh goodyear tires is going to help you change lanes be aggressive when it matters let's see Jack and now wow. is going to put four wow. tires or at least tires on the 24 shock. He's giving up Chase the track Elliott position. Also, going to do it. Yeah, that's pretty big. Give up that much track position this late in the race. He was running in third position. William Byron gives up that to come down pit road for four tires and Sunoco fuel. Uh, they were talking about the car. He said it's just a little bit free. I could really use the tires for handling. That's why they pitted, Marty. Dave, I would say the call for Cliff Daniels and Jimmy Johnson was fairly easy. They had kind of lost all their track position. Remember that? And Jimmy said on the radio, I'm at an absolute four-wheel slide in every corner. So it's going to be four Goodyear tires here and adjustment as well. We'll see if this helps the seven-time champ make it into the 2020 playoffs. The players right there on the bubble coming to pit road. We'll see if it pays off.
under yellow at Daytona. A little hard to make out right here, but you see in the distance the smoke of the spinning 51 of James Davidson, the 62 of Brendan Gaughan also involved. This yellow brought decision time for the crew chiefs. And guys, the 24, William Byron running third. Chad Knauss brings him to pit road, puts tires on him. He'll restart 14th. Drivers, I'm concerned about the loss of track position. Yeah, I am too a little bit. Now he's got to go back through all these people. Here we are coming to the restart. You got to do everything right. And from high above, Aero coverage brought to you by Geico as we see the restart. Could it be the final restart? 13 laps to go from Daytona. And quickly the 18 of Kyle Busch jumps in front of the 11 and down to the bottom line. So how much of a difference will them new tires make for some of those guys in the back that came down and got them? We heard their cars weren't driving very good. You have to imagine the guys on the older tires don't have the grip that they're going to need here late in this race. Outside lane, they were all running into each other. I was surprised Jimmy Johnson didn't go to the bottom. Kevin Harvick decided to go to the bottom. Jimmy Johnson staying at the top, now moving to the bottom. Yeah, the top line slowing down, bunching up, and so the 48 of Jimmy Johnson moves to the bottom, and now that bottom line seizes up. I think we're going to test a lot of these guys' wreck avoidance here <laughs> in another lap or two. It's going to get crazy. Harvick went to the middle. Jimmy Johnson went with him. Jimmy's got to take every opportunity to move forward. Gonna have to take some chances. A lot of sparks still flying from underneath the 48. Oh, yeah. Air temps coming up still for that team. Well, these crew chiefs work these cars down throughout the race, getting that spoiler out of the air. Yeah, this is nerve wracking time if you're a driver. Coming to 12 to go on a super speedway on a restart. So many times we see wrecks happen in these situations. Drivers are no longer going to lift, no longer going to cut you any slack. Jimmy Johnson going wherever Kevin Harvick goes right now. How aggressive will they get? Kyle Busch has not won in 2020. The defending Cup Series champion, the two-time champion, still searching for his first win of the season. Stenhouse on that outside line getting aggressive. Jones right there behind the yellow 22 of Logano. Jones and Truex and Stenhouse. Actually, it's Chase Elliott there. Jones, Chase Elliott, Stenhouse in that outside line, working really hard. And remember the six right in the middle next to Chase Elliott. We saw the six of Ryan Newman, and what an emotional roller coaster he's got to be going through. Earlier this year at the start, coming to the finish of the Daytona 500 Rex out doesn't remember anything about the race now back in the pack here and says he wants to go out and win look how much these cars move around as you ride along with Ryan Newman that Coca-Cola cam look at that car Daniel Hibbert in front of him is just dancing around right now William Byron is not in the playoffs stuck behind his teammate Jimmy Johnson he has to make a move he cannot sit there and ride behind Jimmy Johnson yeah, but where is he going to go? He's stuck in the bottom three wide. There's only so much room. He's coming to nine to go. And they all know that. They hear that clock ticking. Tyler Reddick on the outside in the third groove. Yeah, Reddick and that. Reddick's going to make something happen. Bush brothers side by side for the lead. Mayhem behind them. Drivers have to win to make it. Guys like Tyler Reddick. Eric Jones, that outside line, they're doing anything they can to get up here and fight for the win at Daytona. Kurt Busch, battling with his brother. Three wide behind Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch picking his lane. Tyler Reddick has to win. He's put himself in position. So does Eric Jones. Great huge run, run here. Yep, huge run right here. What does Eric Jones do? He helps his teammate. Tyler Reddick out front. Now Tyler's going to try to block. He's in the fence. Up into the wall he goes. The 18 also in the wall. Eric Jones gets caught up in it as well. The big one does happen. The 47, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. McDowell. Austin Dillon caught up in this. That's Ryan Newman in the six. Kurt Busch in the one. damage to the 19 down there. He's carrying a bumper cover down pit road. Kurt Busch trying to get in the pit lane. 
you could feel it coming. You knew it was coming. Just. 37 also, Ryan Priest. A lot of damage. Brian Newman. Yeah, window net down, and he's going to climb out under his own power this time at Daytona. I'm sure not happy about the way this one ends. No, but I, I know it's not how he wanted it to end, but just to be back at the track, I mean, it's unbelievable. I know he doesn't care about that right now, right? He's a competitor, but it's great to see him at the track. Yeah, the AMR safety team right there on the track, and he waves to the crowd. And you know the crowd is thankful to see these drivers, especially Ryan, after what he's been through here at Daytona, to get Ryan, out of these cars. Ryan is thankful and, and glad to be back here, but he is a racer, and he is going to be so disappointed to not check the box to finish this race tonight. Let's look at some of these replays of how this happened. Get the run from the 20 car. Reddick's going to the inside. I didn't think he was going to get clear when Jones went to help, but he did. He goes up to block into that outside line. Some contact there with the 18, both of them in the fence. Then behind him, the 24, the 48, the 21. I think every all those three got by with no damage. The 24, we got to get another look at him and make sure he didn't get some damage on his right side. But you said it, Junior, right here, Tyler Reddick, clear, way too aggressive of a block. No way Kyle Busch could really do anything there. And then everything behind it just is complete chaos. A huge hit by that 37 yeah, gets Ryan turned Bruce. back up the racetrack. Yeah, head on into that outside wall for Ryan Priest. He's had some hard hits this year. It's been a, been a bad year. Yeah, JTG Doherty Racing has suffered through quite a few disappointments. Yeah, the contact right there got the eight loose. Puts them both in the fence. Man, this Reddick trying to win this race. All right, let's keep an eye on this next shot. And yeah, watch Jimmy Johnson in the 48. There's all three of the point guys all right together in the middle of this wreck. Look at William Byron. It doesn't get closer than that. Man. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yep, Matt Benedetto, Jimmy Johnson, William Byron. The oh. three drivers right on the bubble, all being able to get through. You and now the red flag gets You don't going. wish any bad luck on your other competitors, but I bet when they all three escaped and they looked up and saw each other, they are <laughs> like, goodness gracious. <laughs> I mean, think about it. We've raced a season, and here we are. All the races, everything that's happened so far this year, and here we are, these three cars all racing, and it's going to be a matter of one spot or not. I mean, it's crazy that this can happen. It can be this close. So we saw Tyler Reddick get a good shove from Eric Jones. He utilized that, went up front, thought he could block the 18, maybe got into the fence a little bit. It slowed down that outside line. Let's listen into his radio communication. Yeah, that was just stupid. Probably someone that was going to help me a lot better, I reckon. Well, let's friends now, I guess. So, figure this out. <laughs> Homie, we ain't here to make friends. We brought, our, we brought ours with us, all right? So he feels bad about, you know, a little responsibility for causing that wreck there. Um, and, and everybody kind of goes through that at some point in their career, where whether it's testing or uh, in an actual race, where you, you create a crash and it takes a lot of people out. But... He needs to shake that off. There's so much at stake right now. He's got an opportunity to win and get into the playoffs. He needs to forget about what just happened. Start focusing on the next move he's going to be making. Yeah, it's just it was over aggressive for sure. Just couldn't make this block right here. Tried to do it. A little bit of a little bit of damage, but not bad for him. You can see everything that happened behind him, but you said it, Junior. Tyler Reddick, he's running second. If he doesn't have enough damage where he has to pin, he's still in second. Oh, look at this. Oh. That is why I'm up here tonight. <laughs> I guess just those impacts. I was trying to see what happened to the one in this accident right here. This is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. Sitting there at one point thinking, I might have missed this. And then, no. That's what you get hit in the left rear quarter panel and you're going around. Those images, Junior, it, you know, when you, oh, look at that. Wow. 
Well, Joey Chitwood, yeah, he's not happy. Yeah, Kyle's just not had, it's not been a year, not been the kind of year Kyle wants for sure. So, so this one of Kurt Busch, all the way to the right of the screen, you're gonna start to see the accident, the one's gonna come in. I'm trying to see what got him turned around. I thought he was gonna, oh, I see it now. The six and the three came together when the six was wrecking down the track. He got the one in the right rear quarter panel. Just, I mean, so fast, everybody's wrecking. I, I'm with you, Junior, I just can't believe all three of the bubble drivers skirted through there. Yeah. You heard the drivers, teams involved in this wreck. And again, closing in, they were coming up on eight to go, seven to go, so a red flag has come out to clean up the racetrack. And we want to get the fans the best finish possible from here at Daytona. So they'll clean the track up, and we'll have another restart here. NHL second round playoff action tomorrow on NBC. Game four between the Flyers and Islanders. New York leads the best of seven series two to one. That coverage beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern. It almost looked like uh, O'Reddick was putting the 18 into the glass there uh, coming off of that turn. Obviously, an uh, accident takes place and collects quite a few cars. A red flag condition getting ready for the restart. But while we're under this red flag, we're going to dial up Jimmy Johnson, Jr. I think we chat with him on the radio. Hey, Jimmy Johnson, it's Dale Jr. Booth. You got us? Yeah, buddy, I got you. So, man, uh, from my point of view, this has been the wildest Daytona race I've ever seen. What about you? Yeah, there's a, an energy out here for sure. I think we've all done a nice job behaving so far. And, um, you know, we finally had a big wreck, and thankfully we got through it all. But with a few laps to go and everything on the line, it's going to be an interesting finish. Well, the good thing is you made it through that wreck, but so did the guys that you're racing for that bubble battle. So I assume it's going to continue to get intense. Uh, you got anything left? Yeah, I really feel like we got a good car. We, we started the third stage a little bit off and over adjusted on it. Uh, we got it back there and I was able to, to be aggressive again and fortunately uh, missed that wreck. So uh, I'm ready for this battle to the end. This Ally Chevy's been doing great all day. Really proud of Cliff and everybody on pit lane and all the hard work they put into this car. And, uh, we'll give it all we got. All right, bud. Good luck, and, and thank you for talking to us. Yeah, buddy. Hope everybody at home is enjoying. <laughs> well, so, we so definitely enjoyed. Yeah, he said if he was sitting on the couch, we talked to him earlier. <laughs> commercial break. He said, if I was sitting on the couch, I'd be loving this. I think our heart rate's higher than his. I mean, you know, <laughs> I know it. I mean, he's just like, yeah, man, it's another day. You know, all this on the line, and that's that's just how cool he is. And he looks out of his windshield, and he sees 
the guy he's got to beat. He looks in his rearview mirror and sees the guy he's got to beat. I mean, and it's going to be a restart with like seven to go, seven or six to go, and you know how intense it's going to be. Just and crazy. remember, in this bubble battle is very important, obviously, between these three drivers because there's only two spots to go, three drivers trying to get in. But remember, if somebody other than these three that's outside of the top 16 wins the race, yeah. that means there's only one spot available. You win, you advance if you're in the top 30 in the points. Parker? Kyle Busch exiting the infield care center here. So, Kyle, you were racing with Tyler Reddick up at the front. What happened there between you and him going off in the turn three and four? Uh, slide job gone bad. So, um, hate it for our interstate batteries, guys. I mean, we were a uh, good car all night long. You know, we made our way to the front multiple times, and we were leading a lot of laps there. And um, just waiting for the end for uh, business to pick up, and I guess business was starting to pick up. But, um, you know, just not, uh, not clear. I mean, I, I saw him coming and even checked up, and we still ran into each other and whatever. What about this season? I know it's been a real <laughs> struggle. Same quote, man. It's still 2020. Nothing's gotcha. changed. As you can understand, Kyle Busch sat here with that outcome at Daytona. And there's the champion, the, the 2019 champion, and the luck hasn't been there. He hasn't been to victory lane and frustration virtually at the end of every race. Yeah, it's been a tough year. Kyle and he's used to winning and and usually when they aren't winning they figure it out that's been the difference this year is, is usually when they're struggling they turn it around and there he was in position to win this race I mean he's doing everything he could behind the wheel and circumstances have taken him out of it tonight and I think he feels that way about a lot of this year you know just circumstances they've had speed but I bet you he gets to victory lane for the end of the season well, he may have to because he enters these playoffs in a way that he's never entered them before. He has one playoff point. That's all he has going into these playoffs. So they have helped him advance through the playoffs in the past. He doesn't have them to lean on this time. Parker. Well, the other Bush brother also involved in this wreck, ran up front all night. What did you see there off into three and four? I was just digging on the bottom. I thought that was the best spot to be, and our Monster Energy Chevy was fast. and. We were all in the right spot, I thought, for what we needed to get done. Just got clipped from behind, and our day's done. But all in all, man, uh, we, we've been coming together as a team. We just haven't had the results to show it. I like the clarity and the focus that we have on the number one car heading into the playoffs. So it, it's been a consistent season all the way until these last few. But now it's time. Now we got to lay down everything we've got with Darlington, Richmond, Bristol coming up. So thanks to Monster Energy, Chevrolet. Gear wrench. Uh, sorry, Ganassi guys, I didn't bring her on home, but we were racing hard. We had nothing to lose, and uh, I thought the bottom was the safest spot. We just got clipped from behind. Guys? Yep, and you know, when you we talk about Kyle Bush, I mean, Kurt Bush, both have won a championship. Kyle Bush has won 56 races. Kevin Harvick won his 56th race last weekend. That puts those two in a tie for ninth all time wins in NASCAR. So we've talked about points all night. And, you know, for those of you that don't follow racing every week, this essentially it's a point per position. You see the 15th right now as they're running, Matty Benedetto, then Jimmy Johnson and William Byron. They're all running together. Essentially, every position you gain is a point. So it's a three-way battle between those three guys for those last two spots. We're only going to put 16 in the playoffs, but let's be clear. Running in second is Tyler Reddick. Running in third is Chris Busher. If either one of those wins, that win knocks them into the playoffs and moves that line further back. So you have to assume that you might, you might need to for be 15th, 15th in right. points, not 16th. Well, you mentioned those three that are racing for points. It has been an eventful night. They've done a nice job managing it, managing through the stages. But this right here was the moment in the race where it could have all went bad. The 21 on the bottom sneaks through. William Byron right through the smoke. All three guys take another look at it. William Byron's up top. He does a nice job getting on the brakes. Got a little lucky. Nobody hit him from behind, so you saw he got to miss the wreck. Unfortunately, one driver who did not miss the wreck, the 20 of Eric Jones, he's with Parker. Right, see, he came to this race 50 points out, needed a win to get into the playoffs. You were very displeased with Ty Reddick on the radio with that move he threw. What do you think he did wrong? Uh, he. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't clear. Kyle let him in, number one, to not cause a wreck. And then he ran in the wall and wrecked everybody behind him. So, uh, you know, it's frustrating. He had way too much speed to try to make that move up the hill with, with 
the grip that was left in the tires, you know, we got a lot of laps on there. So it's unfortunate, you know, he wrecked us at Pocono and then to have this happen, you know, it was, uh, it's like two times just kind of making some crazy moves that weren't going to work out. And, uh, you know, unfortunately it was uh, to the detriment of us today. The auto owner's camera was pretty fast and, you know, we were up front. I think we were running, you know, third one when we got wrecked. So we had a shot. Um, we needed to win, and we were there. We just, we just didn't get it. Uh, just didn't get it done. Guys, they had a fast Camry. Just couldn't get to the end. He won two years ago at this racetrack back in 2018. Eric Jones, and you heard him say, "We needed to win to get into the playoffs." Eric Jones looking for a ride in 2021. He will not be back with Joe Gibbs Racing. Let's go back to Parker. Ryan Newman exits the infield care center here under zone power at Daytona. And Ryan. What happened that wreck in front of you? First of all, are you feeling all right? I feel fine. Um, a car obviously just ran out of talent. It seems like you can win a couple of Xfinity championships and still stick your head where the sun don't shine when time comes right. So um, just disappointed. It was a um, kind of an average race sitting there waiting with our guaranteed rate forward and um, never got a chance to show how good a car we had. What do you think of the racing out there tonight, getting back to Super Speedway racing again, and, and what you were seeing at Daytona compared to what we had in February? I mean, I was happy that everybody stayed calm for a long time, but all it takes is we proved all it takes is one goofball to make a mistake. Ryan Newman obviously upset to get involved with the record at Daytona. Not holding nothing back there. Well, we've, we've talked about his passion, too. I mean, Ryan Newman, we saw him up on the wheel in the middle of the race. I mean, he wanted to win here at Daytona. guys I five been, laps to determine the a, playoffs a little more emotion is going to come out here there's so much on the line we've talked about it all night chris busher haven't said his name a lot but he's sitting here in third yeah could it be chris busher's night how about the parody right now hamlin in a toyota rennick chevrolet chris busher a four they're the top three at daytona it'll be five laps to go to decide who makes the playoffs. And it's going to come down to the finish line and who finishes in front of the other of those three that are fighting on the bubble. Up through the gears they go, green flag back in the air. Sounded like Danny Hamlin spun the tires just a little bit, but man, again, he has the best help in the field behind him on these restarts. The 22, Logano. Logano stuck to the back of that. Number 11, Toyota. Great run from this inside, though. Tyler Reddick leading that inside line in the eight. Chris now Busher. he's going to get a little push from Chris Busher. Both lines pushing very hard. Chase Elliott in the nine. Third on that inside line. Then it's Christopher Bell, the rookie, in the 95. Tyler Reddick leading this race. One of those drivers that could upset the bubble battle. Loose right there. Look at him. The cars are not handling good. A lot of these guys on old tires. Eight cars sideways yeah. off of turn four, sideways through the triable. Bush are just pushing him, making that make him even more sideways. Again, Joe Logano almost gets Denny Hammond out to the lead. Almost. He's yeah. still locked on that bumper off of him. turn two. He's yeah. going to clear him. They'll clear him right here. No help right there with the eight car from the 17. So that allowed the front two, two to clear. Here comes Borio with a big run. And Matt Kenseth being aggressive up in there. Look at how loose the 11 is from that push of the 22 of Logano. Hamlin hanging on for his life up front. And Bubba Wallace made it three wide, and when he did, that allowed William Byron to go with him, and that let him clear Jimmy Johnson. But there's Matt, Matty D in that 21 car. Coming up, the bubble battle. Right now, Matt Benedetto, Jimmy Johnson are in. William Byron's out. Three laps to go at Daytona. They almost wrecked it into turn one. Chase Elliott was below the yellow line. Won the penalty because he wasn't passing anybody, but really good save. Oh, big push from Matty D to Matt Kenseth. Look at him moving around. Oh, the 22 oh. is able to save it. Wow. Kenseth with a big run right here, guys. Side by side for the lead. Matt Kenseth in the middle, though, is going to help Denny. Clint Boyer on the bottom of the 14. Oh. Now contact made. Kenseth came down. The 14 up. The nine out of shape. Here comes the 22. Logano's going to take the lead away from Denny Hamlin. Two laps to go. Bubba, Bubba Wallace. Wallace on the outside. Big run. Contact, contact. made again. Bubba 
Bubble Wallace sideways. Can he save it? William the Byron. They're in ready. The, middle. the 22 goes around. Hold the break. Hold the break. Hold the break. Oh, the going to come out now. Big, big wreck behind him. Bubba Wallace got through. Tyler Reddick hard hit. Jimmy Johnson, Johnson caught up in, in the 48. Yeah, big damage on Jimmy's car. Could this be it for the seven-time champion? Not Brand making the playoffs in his final year. It's going to go to overtime. But can the 48 even turn a lap? Bit of a red flag here down in turn one. Wow. And you have to make minimum speed. But if it's for two laps, Steve. Yeah, they just need to get the car to make laps. Minimum speed won't be a concern. But the concern is right here. The 24 is basically one piece moving around to see if he has any flat tires. I don't know how many wrecks it was until they finally wrecked. The action was unbelievable. Two, three, and four wide. Finally, it just felt like it was coming, and it did. Nowhere for Jimmy Johnson to go. Heavy, heavy damage. We saw the 24. I had mentioned the fact that there are two drivers right now that are tied for ninth. Well, how about Jimmy Johnson? 83 career wins. He's top five. And then, of course, only three drivers have ever won seven championships. Richard Petty, Dale Earnhardt, Jimmy Johnson. And this is his final season full time in NASCAR and not the way he wanted to end the regular season and head on into the playoffs if he misses those playoffs. Matt Kenseth, man, he was doing such a great job tonight with that 42 car. Joey Logano looked loose, looked out of shape for almost had, the last two laps. Yeah, I think he had a flat tire there. A lot of contact into turn one. Let's take a look at it. Watch William Byron. So there's big contact right there with Bubba Wallace. Then but William Byron through the middle. Even more contact with William Byron. I think that's where maybe the 22 car lost the left, the right rear tire. Either that or just got turned around. Yeah, once, once Joey, once Joey gets up the racetrack, watch right here. There's contact all the way off turn four, coming through the trial. Well, Joey makes a big move, feeling like he's in really good shape right here. Bubba Wallace to the outside. The 11 is in the back of Joey Logano. That gets him into the Bubba Wallace. William Byron makes it four wide. Now that's when they make the contact, cut the right rear tire. Matt, Matty D could not get slowed down, and that's how quickly things happen at Daytona. Just a point of the race where you can't lift. You cannot lift right there. Watch the 48 and how this happened. Jimmy sees all this going on in front of him and is trying to get out of the gas. Lifting, 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 and Matt Kenseth up the racetrack into the side of the 48. Jimmy clips Tyler Reddick, sends him into the fence. Helpless feeling for a lot of those guys because once you get kind of turned, you're on your way wherever you're going, into the fence or into other cars. You see the damage has the splitter has their left front tire locked up on that 48 car, so they're going to have to cut that free to be able to get him rolling. Ride with Busher here. Let's see how you front, that here, come on three, clear middle. Clear middle. That's the 96 lifting, up to the very lifting. top. Check here in front of you. Stay low, stay low, stay low, check, stay low. Keep coming forward here. Got the 48 right here on the apron. Watch that 48 slide back right down. Right Keep going forward. Denny Hamlin. Back up. As he gets into the back of the 22 here. This is off the bumper of Denny's car. That covered. Flips to 22. I guess the only thing, yeah, if you're worried about William Byron is that left rear tire. The contact that Joey Logano, that Joey Logano has with the 24, what that damage might have done to that tire when they get this restart, because he's not going to want to give up that first place or second place position. Yeah, and even though Jimmy Johnson, you know, he looks like he's in really bad shape, you still are afraid to pit and give up those spots because, you know, if you do finish 16th in points and some, a, a new winner pops in there, all of a sudden you're out of the playoffs. So that's a tough call for the crew chief there, Steve.
It's very tough. You know, you see the 24 sitting right there. I was trying to get a good shot of the left rear tire. It's kind of blocked out by the 14. We can't really see it as it sits here. We're hearing some conversation on the radio. They're not sure how the tire is as well. Let's listen into the 24. Danny said it does have a rub. Try to get uh, 88 or 9. Oh, I think that thing's good. Did you just see that shot from the TV? Yeah, I think the left sides are good. Uh, <laughs> listen, I would. What if we can get this co this helicopter to go to the other side of the 24? Give us a shot of that left rear tire. That's where they're concerned. When I saw the TV shot, I was actually more worried. But okay, uh, you well, know, rubbed all the letters off of that tire, and that was hard contact. Um, but I believe the tire was already, you know, the, the, the contact with the 22. So here's the shot as we work around here to the left side. We're going to take a look at this left rear tire. It's wrinkled up a little bit, the fender there. So oh, the, yeah. oh, there's definitely a wrinkle on the yep. fender, but there's air in the tire. But there's also, it looks like a groove on the sidewall. Yeah, no letters. I mean, to your point, Jeff, now the problem is what's the situation? Does the 48, can they continue? How is the 21 going to finish? And the big question is who's going to win the race? Christopher Bell's up there. If he wins the race, then only one guy gets in. So... Just a reminder, under red flag conditions, you can't work on the car. So right now they're assessing the damage. The second it goes to yellow, they'll go to work, try to fix it as quickly as they can. But again, a red flag at Daytona. The big one happens again. We're going to overtime. NFL kicking off on NBC Thursday, September 10th. Patrick Mahomes, the Super Bowl champion Chiefs, are going to host Deshaun Watson and the Texans. Then on September 13th, the season premiere of Sunday Night Football. That Prescott the Cowboys visit Aaron Donald and the Rams in their new L.A. home. Great music. Love that sound. We've gone from red to yellow, so work has started on the 48. Marty. Yeah, Rick, it's actually the second run at working on the 48. Cliff Daniels directed the guys very quickly to get some work done before the red flag came out the first time. But, man, you can see all that damage. I, I don't see any way, really, with five to go that Jimmy Johnson can get the car really rolling straight at this point. That's kind of their goal here. And Cliff Daniels was very clear earlier this week. He said, listen, of course, we want to make the playoffs. We want to win the race at Daytona. But this will not define us as a team that will not define Jimmy's career. He's a seven-time champ. You cannot take that away from him. We all certainly wanted to make the playoffs, but with five to go, probably not going to happen for Jimmy Johnson in this final full-time season. Remember, guys, we just need to make a lap, Calvin. That's all we need is one lap. There you go. Need to make a lap. So, let's go to Parker now with Tyler Reddick. 
Right, Rick, you just came out of the Infield Care Center. And Tyler, from the wreck just before this one, a lot of drivers were upset with you. What do you say to those ones that were not happy with how aggressive you were racing? They weren't wrong. Um, that move uh, really hurt my chance to win that race, bringing the caution out, causing that wreck. So they were, they're right to be upset, I feel like. Uh, if someone made that move on me, I'd be pretty upset too. So um, I just was too late. I, I was clear for a second, and um, when I slid up, it messed the 18 up, and it caused a big wreck back there. So yeah, I mean, I totally understand them being upset. Obviously, there was not a lot of laps left, and when I did make the move that I, uh, I was hoping I was going to complete without causing a wreck, it uh, would have put us in a good spot there to the end. It would have kept the restart from happening, and the uncertainty that ended up getting us further back in the pack and causing another wreck that I was in. So, yeah, it was a really stupid move. As you can tell, the rookie obviously dejected. Uh, I'm impressed with that answer, yeah. though, out of a 24-year-old, yeah. right? He took ownership, and, and, I mean, you can't fix cars now and even put himself in the other position, so I'd be upset, too. We heard him on the radio earlier talking about learning and always wanting to learn, and when we got to learn from these experiences, well, that's a tough lesson to learn right there. You see the 48. Out on track. A-plus job on the 48 team right here to get their car back on the racetrack. Let's go back to the infield care center, Parker and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Yes, Rick. Ricky, you were hanging out the back most of this race, and you decided to go to the front, and then the aggression picked up. Did you have the speed to stay up there, and did you think it maybe got overly aggressive? No, I think uh, you know the race kind of played out similar to what we thought it was going to. Starting at the back, We've decided to just kind of cruise with our Kroger Camaro. Uh, it was nice running up the bottom there, you know, in that final stage uh, with the nine and, and the 88 behind us. And I felt like we were making headway, got up beside the 18 for the lead. And, you know, it was tough with those, the 18 and the 11 together. But I thought with us, the nine and the 88, I thought we could, like, you know, keep our momentum up. But something happened behind them, and uh, they got shuffled and separated from me. And, uh, then there at the end, we were just running the top lane. Uh, looked like the eight tried to pull a slider and didn't quite have it cleared. And, and we all just bunched up and got hit from behind there. But our Kroger Camaro was fast again. And, um, you know, I had a lot of fun, but uh, sucks not to get the uh, finish out of it. It's always fun when you're up front, guys. <laughs> when we talked to him earlier this week, he said, you know, I'm pretty laid back. It's business as usual when I go to Daytona. Well, he did just that. He was aggressive at times. Uh, he laid back at times. And when it came down to the finish of the race, he was in position. He just got taken out. So now we're going to go to overtime. Denny Hamlin looking to sweep the races at Daytona this season. Won the Daytona 500 earlier this year before the coronavirus pandemic. And that was actually his third Daytona 500 that he has won. So this is becoming Denny Hamlin's playground. And another driver coming out of the infield care center. We go to Parker. Right, Rick, it's Joey Logano who won the first two stages of this race. You were at the front. You look so dejected getting out of that car. Is this one that got away? Oh, it's just super speedway racing. It gets so intense at the end, and uh, everyone's pushing so hard. And it's one of those situations. You're so close to the front. You got to stay in it and keep going for it and, uh, and try to get the lead. And I uh, got a good run um, off the top side with the 43 pushing enough to, to clear the, the 11, and I knew I could do that, which we did. Uh, I was hoping I can get back up in front of the 43, which we didn't, and the 11 got me just off-centered a little bit. And it's no one's fault. It's just super speedway racing. It's hard pushing, and uh, it got me in the right rear, and it turned me to the right and uh, ran me in the bubba, and that cut down my right rear tire. And by the time I got into turn one, and you can't control it, and uh, it's going out front of the whole field. So. Um, you know, thanks to NASCAR, we got uh, safe cars and, um, and Team Penske for building something safe, and then I'm okay. And uh, the good news is we're ready for the playoffs. So we did what we needed to do today. Uh, we ran up front. We got two stage wins, uh, a couple playoff points, which is great. Not the best uh, starting position for us next week after this, but uh, overall proud of the effort of the team, and uh, I feel like we're ready to go. That's Super Speedway, guys, coming to the restart. And, Steve, we saw the 48 uh, do a little bit more work on that car, come back out there's a clock that they've got to make sure they're not on pit road for too long working on the car. Yeah, we've heard from NASCAR they have not exceeded that six-minute crash clock that you mentioned. So now for green-white checkered, I think his goal is to stay on the racetrack, gain as many points as he is. You never know. We, we, could, see another, uh, we could see another caution in this overtime. He could gain some more points. Well, remember also, guys, we had a little bit of concern about that left rear tire on that 24 car. 
doesn't have a cut in it. They decided to stay out, not change that tire. Coming to overtime, presented by Credit One Bank. Denny Hamlin, William Byron making up row one. Denny Hamlin's best friend right now is Matt Benedetto. I think with the position Matt's in, he'd be happy to push that 11 car to the win, but that inside line is organized, and they're going by Denny on the inside. Clint Boyer pushing that 24, Byron to the lead. Up the racetrack, a block for the 11. Clint Boyer goes up. Here comes Christopher Bell in the 95. Christopher Bell is racing for a win to try to get into the playoffs. Christopher Bell, a 25-year-old, going up right now against the 22-year-old and William Byron, those two leading at Daytona. And two wide behind them. Not a lot of energy that's going to be generated from that. As long as they're too wide, now you're starting to see a little bit of a run from that top lane. That's going to move this bottom lane. Truex to the outside of Bell. What was the number you mentioned earlier, Steve? How many times at Super Speedway races has Martin Truex Jr. come up a little bit short? Car in the fence, hard. Oh, hard. Clint Boyer in the 14, slamming into the wall. Out there, man. Hold your line, hold your line, hold your line. They've already taken the white flag. The next flag will end the race. Martin Truex Jr. out front. Now William Byron fighting on the inside for the lead and the they win. Crash. They run behind, behind them again. Stay with your teammate. They continue you to dig. fight. You're clear. Through three and four. William Byron looking for his first ever win in the NASCAR Cup Series. A win, a secured spot in the playoffs. William Byron's going to win. Chase Elliott coming home in second. NASCAR has told us they wouldn't throw the caution if they thought the drivers were not in danger if they were involved in an accident. They let them race all the way back to the checkered flag. You see the 13, Ty Dillon. Hard contact. We saw the four of Kevin Harvick also involved. Clint Boyer was involved. 21 and Matt DiBenedetto crossed the line in 12th with a little bit of damage from some of those crashes happening in that last lap. He has a little bit of. Right now, unofficially, the 48 of Jimmy Johnson out of the playoffs. The 21 of Matt DiBenedetto. Taylor, you can continue crying. We know you're watching at home. Matt DiBenedetto looks to have just made it into the playoffs. And there, the remnants of the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. A seven-time champion. He better do a hell of a burnout. William Byron, only the second driver ever to win in the 24. Of course, Jeff Gordon made the number famous. Checkered flag moment brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. Chad Knauss, a seven-time champion crew chief, <laughs> switched over to William Byron. Nice work, boys. When we talked to Chad, he mentioned there's really no comparison between the two drivers because when he was with Jimmy, they were both younger. They were both kind of growing and learning the sport together. Now he has someone green who's learning the sport for the first time. And he's seven championships into it. Look at the celebration. And the crowd's able to enjoy it here with the fireworks in the background. William Byron gets his first win in the NASCAR Cup Series. Marty. Rick, the car is going to get away, but I don't think William Byron cares at this point. Man, what a day to get your first career win. Kind of soaking it in in front of these Daytona fans. So, William, you guys pit for four tires. You're back in traffic. At that oh moment, my God. did you think a win was even possible? Uh, yeah, I mean, I had confidence in, in Chad and the guys that um, we could get four tires and, and make the most of it. So um, just extremely blessed. And uh, this is a... Uh, it's incredible, man. It's been uh, it's been a hard couple of years in the Cup Series and trying to get my first win and um, 
try to gel with this team. And these guys have done an awesome job today and gotten us in the playoffs. And it's amazing, man. <laughs> What a moment to celebrate with your crew. William, how intense was the racing tonight? Racing your teammate, Jimmy Johnson, yeah. knowing it was a point or two, either way it could swing. What was that like in the pack all night long? Yeah, it um, probably the hardest track to points race. You know, we, uh, we didn't have a great stage two. Um, kind of got back in the pack, got shuffled when everyone went single file and kind of thought my hopes were up, up there. and. Um, we were racing around the 21 and the 48 in the final stage. And I was like, man, I gotta, gotta really make something happen. And luckily, we was able to push the 43. Uh, the 22 and him made some contact and opened up a hole for me, and I wasn't gonna lift. So, <laughs> it, uh, it's awesome. Thanks to Liberty University, Chevrolet. Um, thanks to God, it's it's amazing. In 2020, it's special to celebrate with the fans, right? How about this moment to celebrate with those guys? There's fans here at Daytona tonight. Go have fun. William Byron is in the playoffs the best way you can do it, Rick, with a win, and the fans cheering him on. First checkered flag, the first of many, I'm sure, for this young man. So much potential, and we've seen it now at the World Center of Racing. We had a lot of accidents on that final lap. Let's take a look at some of the things that were going on on Chris Busher's car following Kevin Harvick down the back straightaway. Harvick gets in the fence there. And they all got checked up in front of Harvick and Busher wasn't able to get slowed down. And then there he goes into turn one and the right rear tire's flat at that point. His teammate in front of him. Clint Boyer hit the wall. Off turn two. This is down the back straightaway. Corey LaJoy gets turned around. Hard in the wall. Oh, there's Amarola. And Ty Dillon also making big contact. This is last lap chaos. You know, how about William Byron? You know, guys obviously winning this race, moved him into the playoffs, but this started last week in that second race at Dover. They ran horrible in the first race on Saturday. Ran absolutely terrible. They went to work, made changes. We heard the crew chief and the driver yelling at each other during the race. They made it better, and on Sunday, they went and performed. And their season, in my mind, turned right there. They answered the call. They ran bad Saturday. They stepped it up Sunday. That was a mature effort on Sunday by That's where it started to turn for this team. Take all the momentum into the playoffs, Rick. If you're going to qualify, it's a great way to do it. Take a look at this. Unofficially, this is the playoff grid, the 16 drivers that will fight for a championship. Again, it's different rounds, different racetracks. You'll go three races, Darlington, Richmond, and Bristol, the first three races for the round of 16. Four drivers will be eliminated. And you go to the round of 12 all the way down until the championship four at Phoenix and the best of the four ends up the champion. Could it be William Byron? Right now, the momentum very high. He wins at Daytona, his first career win, and a big stage to do it at.